Engines fired up, fans fired up. We're ready for racing under the lights at the world's fastest half mile. Toyota. Let's go places. Hey, Dan, what are you doing? Kevin here says Mobile One Annual Protection is proven to protect for 20,000 miles. It'll save you a lot of time. And what do I always say about time? Well, you say there's not enough time in the day, and then you sigh loudly, and then you say your shins hurt. <laughs> hey, with all this extra time... Sorry, buddy. Kevin and I have a tea time at 11. 20,000 miles between oil changes guaranteed. Mobile One annual protection. Available at these locations. And here it comes. Austin Dillon wins. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. The big contact. Watch into the bottom of the track. You don't like that kind of racing? Don't even watch. The champ is back in victory lane. How special. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. This summer, the world's greatest thoroughbreds compete for a spot in the richest event in American horse racing. Wow, what a finish. The Challenge Series continues at the Traverse Stakes, Saturday, August 25th on NBC. On NBCSN is brought to you by Chevrolet, the most awarded car company four years in a row. Monster Energy, unleash the beast. And by Credit Car. The Bristol Night Race was always a race that everybody had on their bucket list. You just can't miss it. Kyle Busch, get out the broom. You just swam at Bristol. The adrenaline of that race and, and being in a night race and when cars crash, the sparks that fly, the tempers that flare, but I think the action is great. And this used to be one of the most coveted tickets in all of sports coming to the Bristol night race. It is an event. It is something that it's a must see. If you're a race fan, you've got to experience. Want to take a look at the starting grid for tonight's race? Up front, Kyle Larson won the pole. Chase Elliott will start on his inside. And a lot of guys are thinking it's the Kyle and Kyle party tonight. Well, Kyle Busch is going to start in row two. I think he has to be the favorite. But other names come to mind. How about row three? William Byron. Can the 20-year-old upset the racing world? Up against the wall. He's going to be one that we're going to keep our eye on tonight. We're also going to be able to chat with him. Jeff, why don't you dial him up on the radio? Hey, Ryan. It's Burton. You with us? Yeah, about that. Man, this racetrack's crazy, tight action. Tell me how you're going to deal with all this traffic. Well, uh, your guess is good as mine. Um, this thing is, uh, as you know, can go from top to bottom pretty quickly. And uh, I think just how you try to manage your car through the top and bottom lanes of, of how it changes throughout the night when uh, the traction compound gets gets a little bit worn off of it. So uh, we'll have to find out, but really happy to have Ram and Fleetwood back with us this weekend. Hopefully we can get a little bit of uh, redemption from the sprint race. Well, how long do you think it's going to take for that stuff on the bottom to wear out and work the groove to the top? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Um, watching the, uh, the other races, you know, last night and the truck races, it's kind of hard to tell how long it's going to take to wear out. But 
Uh, and, you know, they sprayed it or reapplied it this morning and last night, so we'll see. Uh, we'll definitely be searching around, though, but I think it'll happen here within the first stage. Well, man, the fans, thank you for taking some time. Good luck tonight. Have fun. All right. Thank you, bud. Enjoy it. Some of the greatest views of Bristol are when you're riding with these cars and with these drivers. Take us through the end cars. All right, we got the 22 car. Joe Lugano's got that Ford performance camera, the front bumper. It's going to be awesome all night long. Martin Tricks Jr. with the Bass Pro Cabela's ca uh, camera. We've got the side panner that's on the right side of the car. Kevin Harvick with the Jimmy John's cam. He's got a 360 camera in the interior of the car there. Chase Elliott with the Mountain Dew cam. Reverse face. We're going to be looking at that all night long, seeing him when they're working hard. And then Kyle Larson, our pole sitter with the Chevrolet cam. He's also got a right side side panner camera. All right, Steve, the night race. It's long. It'll be under the lights. 500 laps around this bull ring. Well, 500 chaotic laps. So much can happen at Bristol. It's not just crazy on the racetrack. It's going to be crazy on pit road. You mentioned it, 500 laps, a little over 266 miles. But the crew chiefs are going to have to break it down in stages. The first and second stage, both 125 laps in length. That final stage, 250 laps. We expect the cars to be able to go about 170 to 175 laps on fuel. And a competition caution. Lap 60. Heavy rains came through the area last night, washed the water rubber off the racetrack. So NASCAR's decided lap 60, they'll throw a yellow, give these teams a chance to work on their cars. Let's check in with Rutledge Wood at the Peacock Pit Box. Yeah, Rick, you know what? I was given a big assignment tonight. Dale Jr. wants me to find the best parties here on the infield. But They come out of turn number four. All right, Steve, so we heard our drivers mention it'll be Kyle or Kyle, but you think there might be uh, maybe the possibility of the youth coming in and spoiling that party? I've just seen too many things happen under the At Bristol, again up front, it is Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott making up row one. The Bass Pro Shops in a rate, night race is underway. And already, Paul Bernard putting the bumper to the back of Chase Elliott almost up into the wall. Paul Bernard's going to take second. Uh, Paul Bernard, real aggressive right off the bat, and that's kind of the mentality it takes at this racetrack. We haven't talked much about Paul Bernard, but he's also in that position. If he can win tonight, he's in the playoffs. He really closed on Kyle Larson in three and four. And Kyle. a pile up in the middle. The 18 of Kyle Busch is around. Contact, they're rolling in there. Great Golding hits late. And Steve, you said it. I don't think I know Just because you have a great car doesn't mean you're going to avoid these kind of things. It's lap two. It's Already in Craig. You see the 18 pull away, the tail panel damaged very heavily. The left front tire took a very hard shot. We'll have to see what the suspension looks like. Bobble Wallace with heavy damage on the 43 smoking. I assume the radiator's knocked out of that car. Steve, there's mandatory parts that have to be on these cars at certain racetracks. What do they have to do, especially to the 18 with the back flying off of that? So the tail panel is required at some racetracks. NASCAR's going to have to make the decision whether they feel the speed here is high enough that that's going to be required. That'll be NASCAR's decision. But remember, the biggest difficulty here is you only have six minutes to make all these repairs, and pit road can be so long here. You spend so much time. Let's take a look, guys, at what happened. This was coming out of turn four. So Kyle Busch on the bottom of the racetrack gets up the racetrack, out of oh. that sticky stuff, into Ryan Blaney, then he just spins in front of the field. And when he does that, a roadblock right there on the front stretch. A little, sure little contact for the 78. See right there, he's up the racetrack, a little bit of contact, spin. It's just so hard to get slowed down. Oh, that's real, pretty, pretty significant contact for the 78 there. Watch this impact. 
right in the door. Of course, Lee, Jesse Little in that 96 and got slowed down. Pretty good contact. The one thing you're concerned about with the 18 is how much was that contact with that left front wheel going to damage the suspension, the toe? I think he can compete with the rear damage. They've got to replace that tailpiece. Refasten in some way. How much damage did Truex get with the right front contact there? Was there any suspension damage, toe damage there? Damage, toe damage there. And they will have to get the of damage, toe damage there. And they will have to get them all in line before they'll be allowed on to. Damage, damage, toe damage there. And they will have to get them all in line before they'll be allowed on to. Put a spell on you. Yeah, because you're mine. With Chase ATMs, Serena can now grab cash on the go, all with the tap of her phone. Stop the things you do. No card, no problem. Life, live Serena's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Ta 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 ta. What are you doing? I'm enjoying the American Classical. It's the American Classic, All American Dog and Tots for two ninety nine. I'm sorry, the All American Dog and and Tots. Ta 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 ta. Give me that. Choose a chili cheese coney or a quarter pound double cheeseburger with Tots for just two ninety nine. Let's go places. Hey, Dad, what are you doing? Kevin here says Mobile One Annual Protection is proven to protect for 20,000 miles. It'll save you a lot of time. And what do I always say about time? Well, you say there's not enough time in the day, and then you sigh loudly, and then you say your shins hurt. <laughs> hey, with all this extra time... Sorry, buddy. Kevin and I have a tea time at 11. 20,000 miles between oil changes guaranteed. Mobile One Annual Protection. Available at these locations. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. $25. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Dictionary under domination. There's a picture of Kyle Busch at Bristol. Five truck wins, nine Xfinity wins, seven cup wins. He has been incredible. Swept here two years, 2010, 2017. Domination is what it is all about for Kyle Busch. But on lap two, he's involved in an incident. Marty. And Rick, he's on pit road. Adam Stevens just said the splitter is okay. That was one of his concerns because Mark Truex Jr ran over their splitter on the left side. That does look fine. They do have a left front rub. That's one concern. Kyle Busch, the steering is okay. A little bit to the left. They're going to cut that tailpiece off, which they have done. They do not have to have that tonight here at Bristol, so they're going to make several stops here and again pitted while pit road was closed for that 18 car. Remember, the clock is always going to continue to go every time he goes on to pit road, so that's going to be difficult for him. But last night, he was dominating the Xfinity Series race, was out front by three and a half seconds, got out of the groove on the high side of the racetrack, got into the wall. Well, it looked minor, but he cut the tire down. That put him up into the wall, and in the end, he couldn't get back out on the racetrack. He was out of the race. So Kyle Busch not able to continue in the Xfinity Series race, not happy at all after the fact, and now, and only lap two, this happens. Yeah, and he's inside the 12. There's no contact that forces the 18 up the racetrack. He just loses control. His race car slides up. 
maybe touches the 12 a little bit, spins around, and now he's just at the mercy of everybody behind them. The track gets clogged, there's contact. This hit right here from the 96, you heard Dale Jr. talk about it. That's a heavy, heavy shot to that left front tire. I know they're starting to work on the body, as Marty reported. NASCAR has let us know they don't need the tail panel at this short track. That's not required. So now it's about getting clearance for the tires. But guys, I'm not sure that left front tire I mean, that suspension would take hours to survey at the shop. Here, they're going to have mere seconds on a pit stop. Well, yeah, he said, I'm sorry, he said the wheel was to the left a little bit, meaning the toe is off at least a little bit. So that's something they're going to have to address for sure. They're going to get plenty of time tonight to work on that. Another car that I saw in that crash replay, the 19 of, of, Daniel, of Daniel Suarez, he's going to have to have a great night tonight. If he can't win into the playoffs, I mean, he's going to have to have some have, – this was a chance. I think he had great speed in practice. So we saw him have contact with the left rear quarter panel from the 43 car. It's pretty severe contact, so that hurts his chances to win down the day. And, Junior, he's going to come down pit road right now, work on that quarter panel damage you talked about. In fact, saw up part of the bumper cover there. Daniel said also, I got into the wall a very, very little amount. So a little front end, but mostly that quarter panel. You can see they're going working hard on that because Junior, even at this track, getting a whole race car can be really helpful. Yeah, you see him tearing that crush panel out right there, throwing it over the wall. That that's gonna unseal the interior of that car. He's got to run all night long with carbon monoxide and all kinds of gases coming into the car. Coming up into that left rear. There's uh True X working on his car down the kill. Yeah, Junior, don't know exactly how much damage trying to see was done to that right front. At the very minimum, Martin Trucks Jr. felt like he had a flat tire. They had some bare bond ready. You see they're making sure they have good clearance um, now that they've replaced that tire. And the other thing I can tell you is Truex just saying it was so slick down low. He said he was dead sideways through three and four before that wreck, Parker. Right, Kelly. And Denny Hamlin actually had similar comments before the green. He said it looked like there was puddles of that PJ1 put down on the bottom before they got going. And you can see the way they've fixed the damage on that 11 car. They've been down pit road twice, trying to keep that hood down and pull out all the fenders on the 11. Not a good start for a guy that qualified in the top 10. Yeah, this track's going to be slick in parts because of the rain, washing off some of that rubber from the night before. But we saw cars like Paul Menard. He was running really good right around the bottom before this wreck happened. It looked like he was flying around three and four with a lot of grip. So a lot of these guys' cars reacted differently. We're gonna work on this left front fender, try to remove that tire rub. The, fender, the, tire, the fender's rolled up at the top at the 12 o'clock mark. Also, we're gonna lose a lap, let's do it. And you hear Adam Stevens, we're gonna lose a lap if we don't get this fixed quick. So they're gonna put the left side tires here on for uh, Kyle Busch. Again, they put on left side tires only right here, trying to stay ahead of the pace car. They're barely going to do that. And Adam said on the radio, this might be our only shot to fix it before we go back green. So there's a couple of things. The first thing Adam Stevens needs to make sure they do is do not exceed the crash clock. I don't think they will. They've been down maybe three times, about a minute and a half a time. They're at about four and a half minutes total. You're allowed six. So they should be fine there. And how the crash clock works is once all of these cars that were involved reach minimum speed which is a time set by NASCAR. It's usually about a second and a half off the pole. You know, normal race pace. Once all of these cars make well, just one lap, Rick, they're cleared and cleared for the rest of the night unless they get in another accident. So after that, then all of these cars can really make all the corrections and all the repairs they need. It's minimum speed. just barely under 18 seconds. Should be not an issue, but look at the look, smoke yeah, tire rub. on the 18. I'm not sure. That's just sheet metal, guys. I wonder if the suspension's not damaged, making the car travel awkwardly. It looked like they had hammered it out pretty good. Yeah, see, they're going to come back down right now, and they know they're going green, but they're going to come back down. They said they we just can't take a chance here, so they're going to try and figure out where this rub is and see if they can diagnose this a little bit more in the 18th then. And, Marty, they have, they've already used about three and a half minutes of the crash clock, so they're going to have to really pay attention. It's not just a lap. They don't want to be eliminated, Rick. Absolutely. Now, about ready to go back to racing as... The 42 of Kyle Larson has Paul Menard on his inside as the green flag comes back out. So now think about these guys. They just saw a big wreck by guys being on the bottom. How do you with confidence drive that car as hard as you want to on the bottom of the racetrack? You see, some are confident, some aren't. Look at Kevin Harvick. Oh, there's contact. Harvick takes the lead away from Kyle Larson. Larson slides up the racetrack, and there was contact made between Kyle Larson and Ryan Blaney. Making sure with that left front of Blaney. Kyle Larson coming back on the inside. Harvick's having a little trouble hooking up on the outside line here. It's really hard to tell when these cars are, what these cars are, you know, how these guys are feeling about the grip. 
where the grip is. There's only one way to find out, though, isn't it? That's just drive yeah. the car, drive it hard, and find the limit. Of course, you've seen already two cars in the front lose the bottom and lose grip. Blaney looking to the lead. Yeah, Larson come off the bottom there. Look at that run in the middle by Blaney. Looked like Larson was going to run right around the bottom there, slipped up off the bottom off of turn four, and Blaney gets that run. The whole field now wrestling for the bottom of the racetrack. And so we just heard the drivers talking about the bottom being very slick. Well, now they're all on the bottom. So that's what's confusing about this chemical they lay down is when does it fire off? How long does it take before you can make grip on the bottom of the racetrack in that chemical? Yeah, Kevin Harvick, who was leading the race, has already fell back to fifth place just in front of this pack here. Paul Menard, who was running in second. All Junior, up. he's fallen way back since the restart. He just radioed into his crew. Something's wrong. Remember at the start of the race, he had super grip down on the bottom and nearly got to leader Kyle Larson, but now he's in trouble. So we're just getting report. Michael went down the 34 car. He did not get out before he before the time ran out on his damaged vehicle policy, so he's out of the race. Everybody else has made it to minimum speed. Oh, Paul Menard oh, in the fence there. Menard into the wall as he is struggling with the 21 now after the restart. He is holding up William Byron here. William's trying to find a way around him. Paul's going to the bottom. And he's going to get a little bump. Paul don't want him in the bottom. Trying to move him out of the way, but Paul's finding grip down there. Trying to settle in. It's almost what you have to do, and then Junior, you don't want to put yourself in jeopardy. But if you don't block, you're going to get passed all night. Now Menard can. Now his phone was far enough up on him, where he just couldn't pull down. He radioed in left front is shaking like crazy. Left front, what, it almost sounds like a wheel loose, doesn't it, Steve? It's shaking. Yeah, it does. A wheel or perhaps damage to the tire, but you hate to have a loose wheel before even a pit stop, but we've seen it happen, and you see how much the 21 is struggling up the racetrack. William Byron trying to get by. Jamie McMurray looking low on the bottom. A little bit of contact for sure out of the 21. And this trouble has it drug William Byron. I mean, William lost so many spots just because he could not get back to the bottom of the racetrack, Parker. And Jeff, his spotter, was screaming on the radio, move the 21, move him. Trying to encourage William to just use that bumper to get by, and he finally gets by him on the bottom. Listen, it's hard to move a guy when he's in the top. I mean, he's on the bottom, you can move him and drive underneath him, but he, when he's on the top and you move him, where are you going to go when there's guys underneath you? So it's a time to move somebody, but on the top of the racetrack, that's a dangerous time to do it. We got Ryan Blaney up here leading the race. He's about to come up and lap. Kyle Busch just right in front of him there. Kyle struggling to keep the speed in the car. Oh, here's the, 20, here's the 21 trying to get down. Blaney has to check up. Look at the damage on the right front of the 21 car. He's got a right front flat. He won't be able to get down. They're all, they're circled all the way around the racetrack. It would be almost impossible to find a clear space to get him down. He has some broken suspension in the right front. He's had medical, he's made hard contact with the right side. This is going to knock him out of the race. I don't know if he'll be able to repair that. It's just, it's almost impossible to get down and get to pit road. He's down, he's down minus 32. He can't ease it down because he can't, when he turns the wheel, it doesn't turn left. It's going to be in, in NASCAR's best interest. Just, right there. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Him, but... Debris coming off of that right front tire. And let's take a look at what happened. You see the right wheel almost completely oh off. Oh, my gosh. Hard hit into the wall there. Well, that's that vibration he was talking about. He was feeling it in the left front, but the problem was in the right front. That is a that is a bad angle. But it has broken the right front suspension, so that's the end of the race for this gap. See there, I think it's lower cute. and upper is both broken. Corey LaJoy, Michael Looks like the lower is broken. Bubba Wallace, Dre Galding, and AJ Allmendinger already all off of the track. This will be a hard one for the crew to diagnose because of the damage they're seeing there. But such a disappointment for Paul. He had a top five car in speed in the spring. Before the rains came, he was a legitimate top three racer. So they were really optimistic about tonight until all this. From second on the restart, into the wall, and now... I put a spell on you. With Chase ATMs, Serena can now grab cash on the go, all with the tap of her phone. 
No card, no problem. Life, live Serena's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Wow. Oh, jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck. And there are cars. It's my Chevy. Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Awesome. I'm proud. You know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. Hey, Dan. What are you doing? Kevin here says Mobile One Annual Protection is proven to protect for 20,000 miles. It'll save you a lot of time. And what do I always say about time? Well, you say there's not enough time in the day, and then you sigh loudly, and then you say your shins hurt. <laughs> hey, with all this extra time... Sorry, buddy. Kevin and I have a tea time at 11. 20,000 miles between oil changes guaranteed. Mobile One Annual Protection. Available at these locations. This summer, the world's greatest thoroughbreds compete for a spot at the richest event in American horse racing. Wow, what a finish! The Challenge Series continues at the Traverse Stakes, Saturday, August 25th on NBC. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. The two for five dollar mix and match deal at McDonald's. Choose two of your favorites like the Big Mac and 10 piece chicken McNuggets for just five bucks. Last great policy and welcome back to Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol Motor Speedway. NASCAR Drive, that is your live race day companion. You can ride along with in-car video of your favorite drivers. You can even watch multiple angles at once. Never miss a lap with NASCAR Drive. It's NASCAR.com slash drive. Riding along with Martin Shrek Jr. He got caught up in that incident on lap two. He has rebounded back and currently running in the 19th position. Jimmy Johnson up high. Clint Boyer down low in the 14. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Ryan Blaney has a 1.1 second lead over Kyle Larson. Those two trying to separate themselves, but Chase Elliott holding on to third right now, about uh, half a second back with Larson, then it's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Kevin Harvick all in the top five. Seeing a lot of these guys run at the bottom, run at the top. See Jimmy Johnson up high, cars behind him running high. Stenhouse Harvick, they've been running up top, and they've been running some of the fastest laps over the last several laps. So we've got 15, 14 laps to the competition caution. And now Stenhouse Jr., he just went around. Chase Elliott for third place. We talked about Stenhouse Jr. needing to win to move himself into playoffs. And right now, early in this race, he is doing great running in third spot. And Jeff, he knows they have to win tonight. Always comfortable here at Bristol. He said it reminds him of an old dirt track, talking about Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now in the third position, moving forward. He said, you know what? We probably have the best practices we've ever had here at Bristol. Qualifying, I messed up, but I'll fix that for the race. And so far he has. He's made his way into the top three, a threat to win, and put himself in the playoffs tonight. Here you go. We're going to talk about the playoffs. And you see right there in 17 position is Jimmy Stenhouse Jr. and 36 points behind. That doesn't look like it too, too much. You were thinking earlier at the show, maybe he couldn't point his way in. But well, Alex Bowman's around 13th right now. That's so pretty good. I don't know that that's going to be enough. He'd have to gain. He's got three races to do it, and he, this is his very best racetrack. So the traps coming up are traps he doesn't run well on, so he's got to get it done tonight. He could Absolutely. have a great night tonight and then give it all back up. So I think he still has to be in must-win mode. Guys, it's got to be important, though, that he's running in the top ten because stage points are so important. That's exactly right. And, I'm a, you know, I, I will say this. The last time we saw him in must-win situation at Daytona, there were a lot of things happening around Ricky Sedas Jr., so he's going to have to maintain calmness in the midst of chaos. And Chevrolet on the move as we look at Austin Dillon. Started all the way back in 40th and has moved up 26 spots. Currently running in the top 15 and 14th now. It's that big wreck and has been very patient. He's passing cars, picking and choosing his moments. Definitely being wise through traffic, Parker. 
right, Steve? And the reason he was in the back is because they failed pre-race tech three times. As car chief Greg Ebert was ejected, they're going to lose 30 minutes of practice at Darlington next weekend. But they knew they had a great race car. And speaking to his crew chief, Justin Alexander, he said, it doesn't even bother me we're starting to back. We know we can pass. You've seen that now. We've seen glimmers of greatness out of RCR, Richard Childress Racing, over the past couple weeks. We thought Austin Dillon had a great shot of finishing second a week ago in Michigan. You see the, the other RCR car, Ryan Newman going a lap down right here. Jamie McMurray going a lap down. That traffic has allowed Kyle Larson to gain on Blaney. And we mentioned it's about three laps until that competition yellow. And the last time we saw this 18 of Kyle Busch, he was coming to pit road as this field was coming to green to work on that left front tire row. Well, he is two laps down, which is very difficult to make up. But this early in the race is definitely possible. And the laps right now, faster than the leader consistently. So even with all that damage, I wouldn't quite count the 18 out quite yet. It looks like a Bristol race car. As you mentioned, a competition caution coming up at lap 60 because of rains that came through tonight as well as this morning and afternoon. And so the teams will then have an opportunity to work on the cars once again. Everybody can come to pit road and get fuel if they choose. Chase Elliott currently running in the fourth position. 1.8 seconds behind race leader Ryan Blaney. And Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney, a very close group of friends. Matter of fact, Ryan Blaney went back with Chase Elliott to celebrate his first win that he got at Watkins Glen. And there's the competition caution that has come out. Somebody had caught a huge break with that competition caution. Jamie McMurray, he, the junior I've been over here watching him. Something was getting to happen. He has a tire down or something, and he got a lap down, but he caught a huge break by that caution coming out. Weaving the car back and forth like he may have a loose wheel. He's trying to figure it out himself, self-diagnosed issue. He's very close to going two laps down there, which would have been a difficult thing to overcome the rest of the night. So everyone will get in line before they come to pit road. Looking forward to tomorrow, points leader Scott Dixon in the Verizon IndyCar Series. They're going to return to action this weekend at Pocono Raceway. Again, that's tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Will Power actually won the poll earlier today. The Indy 500 winner has won the last two Pocono races. So it should be a great race for the Verizon Indy Car Series. Now, Rick, one thing about Bristol. It's cramped on the racetrack. Well, it's cramped on pit road. These pit boxes are small and with over 22 cars on the lead lap. That's a lot of cars to hit pit road at once. Hopefully everybody will be able to get in and out. 30 miles an hour. They have to crawl around this place, Marty. And coming down pit road, the leader, Ryan Blaney, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and also on this end of pit road, Chase Elliott. You see all three of those guys. Top of the screen is Ricky Stenhouse. He said it was really good early, but got tighter the longer he ran. And he said, for some reason, my brakes feel like they're going long or a little bit soft for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. We'll watch that for Ryan Blaney. He said it'll be a little bit loose the longer they ran. And for Chase Elliott at the very front, these backstretch pistols tight early, improving, though, as he runs. These guys all with four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. Dave. On the front stretch, you'll see 10th place Brad Keselowski, 7th place Eric Almarola, and 2nd place Kyle Larson. Most of the drivers reporting that their cars are tight. I don't think anybody will pull a strategy move here with a green racetrack. They'll take four Goodyear tires and Sunoco Fuel. Larson's car was tight enough that he wanted a chassis adjustment. So the early leader of the race, the pole sitter, will get a little bit more adjustment. See, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. looks like he'll win the race off pit road. And that race off pit road brought to you by Kroger Click List. You see Stenhouse Jr. gaining a couple can world-renowned artist Red Hongyu use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank? Yes, but this isn't just for anyone. Chase, make more of what's yours. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Wow. Jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck. And there are cars. That's my Chevy. Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Awesome and proud. Oh, you know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. So, Mobile One Annual Protection protects for 20,000 miles? Yes, it's been proven. Yeah. 
and it works in any vehicle. Yes. That's, that's awesome. And so are you. No, seriously, I think you're a good person. I respect you. You're my best friend. I want to hang out more. I'm sorry. 20,000 miles between oil changes guaranteed. Mobile One annual protection. Available at these locations. Want to dominate your fantasy football draft? Go to rotoworld.com to get your fantasy football draft guide. Customizable cheat sheets, position rankings, extensive player outlooks, and more. rotoworld.com. Dominate your draft. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. Your care. Call 1-800-215-6073. Speeding penalties for the 19 of Suarez and the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And so those two got hit going faster than the 35 miles per hour. They, they're supposed to only be able to go 30. NASCAR gives them a five mile per hour cushion. Field approaching the Geico restart zone. It is Blaney and Larson. Blaney up top, Larson down below. Just like last night, that outside line seems to be the preferred line to restart. Look at Larson struggling off the turn two. Look at their catch and Kyle Busch just came off pit road. You know, they're still working on the car. He's going to have to fight hard here to keep from going. This would put him three laps down. Yeah, he's going to have to drive hard. He knows that he he cannot afford to go down another lap. We've got a lot of cars getting the wave around. A lot of cars getting the lucky dog. It's going to make it difficult for him if he's three down. Two down is doable. If you're Ryan Blaney, I think that's your goal. I think you want to put him three down. You don't want to give this guy any hope at all. Eric Jones giving Jimmy Johnson a little bit of bumper down there in three. Turn two for the third position. Harvick's up to second and a little wiggle up top, but it's Ryan Blaney trying to put Kyle Busch a lap down, another lap down. It's hard to come back from two, but it's much harder to come back from three, and Blaney knows that, but we saw it earlier. Before this caution, the 18 car was fast, even with that damage, and right now he's driving away from Blaney. He's missing that tailpiece, and if you take that tailpiece off, that should, in most, in theory, increase downforce on the back of the car and take away a little bit of drag, wouldn't you say, Steve? Absolutely. I think it takes away a little drag and adds downforce, but this is a short track, and short tracks, they aren't required if they come off with damage. Kelly? He's back here behind the pits in the garage. You'll see the one of Jamie McMurray. They are changing the hub of the right rear wheel. He said he thought something was broken, maybe that he had a wheel coming off. They managed to stick it out until that competition caution. I believe that this is what's in result of crash damage. They're allowed to come back here to the garage to make that repair. We'll be able to send them back out. I just hate the camp for issues like that. The sport's tough enough. The track's tough enough. Competition's tough enough. You hate to go to the garage area because of a mechanical issue. Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott side by side. This is for sixth position. Larson restarted on the inside of the front row. This guy I thought was going to be strong tonight. Struggling right now to try to find where his car can get speed and grip. Working that top, working that bottom. He's working that top. He's committed to running. He could have gotten down in between those two cars. The lap before this in the center of three and four and approaching the exit of four, watch Jimmy Johnson drives in the corner hard like you have to and watch the back of the car. It just is not with him having to chase it, and that's why he lost that position and why Larson came up so quickly. You look at Larson's car, that left that right rear quarter panel with that damage. I hate to be particular, but I believe that damage is not, you know, that's that's definitely gonna take a little side force out of that car. Anytime you deform the right rear or the right side quarter panel. Definitely change the side force and lateral grip of the car, and it could be slightly affecting what he's feeling. When you say deform, what about the 18? Kyle Busch, he's got a deformed car. He doesn't even have the back part of the car on it, and he seems to be turning faster lap times than anybody on the racetrack. It's a great shot. You can see the two distinct grooves. Logano's kind of run in the middle. Quarter, on the quarter panel on the 18 car is kind of flared out. You want that. That's like a wing, like a little spoiler on the right side. Definitely uh, not having that tailpiece is going to decrease drag. And 
Maybe increase some downforce. Good three wide battle there. Trevor Bain trying to get in the middle of this argument. Oh man, that's tough. It's tough for Trevor on the inside going into that shallow, trying to keep the car low. Spider's got to be on the ball right here, letting everybody know where they are. Three wide and where are your three wide. Good job, everyone. That was tight racing. Rudd, what you got going on down there, bud? Jeff, I was on top of the Peacock pit box when Kyle was wrecked, and it almost seemed like slow motion. So I'm wondering, from a driver's perspective, how much can you see? Because it seemed like for a lot of cars that would have been avoidable, but so many of them just kind of stacked up there on the side. From a driver, can you see it all when you're coming out of four there? Well, you're in the middle of the corner, so follow Joey Logano right here. So he's right in the middle of the corner. He can't see the exit until now. So that's how quick it happens. And you're running so fast, Junior, that when something happens, these cars just don't stop. And you don't see it, spotter calls it, but next thing you know, you're in the wreck. Yeah, this place is so, the, the banking is so steep. You can't, you, know, you can't stop for a crash happening right in front of you. Hard to avoid. So lap 85, and we've already seen a lot of three wide. And that normally doesn't work very well at Bristol, but check out what Joey Logano is dealing with. What do you do? Where do you go? You got a fast there race go. car. But... Get up there, the dude, dude. Keep coming, keep coming. I'll get tight. Keep on the high side here. That dude's going to run. Great information from the spotter. The spotter's watching, knows that two car is fast, and told him to go with the two car. That's spotter being on his game and paying attention to other cars to help your your car. It's not about watching your car, it's about watching other cars. Starting to see rubber put down on the racetrack as well, not only at the bottom where the PJ1 is down there, but also up top where a lot of cars have been running. Ryan Blaney out in front of the field. He's got to move some of the traffic out of the way to get by. Let's go places. The American classic. A quarter pound double cheeseburger or chili cheese coney and tots for just $2.99. America. Mm -mm -mm. Hurry in for the $2.99 American classic. This is how you sonic. Best tailgate. Brisket. No, real football. Y pollo asado. Poops and wings. Dude, subs. Hot dog. Chili dog. No, Dodger dog. It's gotta be crawfish. Now you talk burgers. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Gang day. Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. Grab yourself a Coke. It's tailgate 101. When it's too cold for camping, we go camping. When it's too hot to work, we work. Too wet to keep going? Nah. This is the Gator XUV835 with game-changing heat and air and three-wide seating. It's never too anything for anything. Nothing runs like a deer. Get $400 off the Gator XUV835M at any participating John Deere dealer. Ta, 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 ta. What are you doing? I'm enjoying the American Classical. It's the American Classic, All American Dog and Tots for $2.99. I'm sorry, the All American Dog and, and Tots. Give me that. Choose a chili cheese coney or a quarter pound double cheeseburger with Tots for just $2.99. Hey, let's go, fellas. It's that time. Tonight, Sunday Night Football. It doesn't get any bigger or better. You trying to get your name out there? You do it right now tonight. Let's take care of business. They're in our house. Sunday night football, let's do our job. Right on the line, bro. Straight up. Sunday night football, man. You ought to be already hyped. That's when people come alive. Everybody watching. Your mama, your daddy, don't let them down. Ah! Together on three. One, two, three. Make sure to tune in on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern for the morning drive. This week, Steve Latart. Can be 
NBC Sports. Of course, we'll be joining. Steve, it's a lot of fun with the bag man, Pete Pistone. I love we're only 97 laps in. We already have a lot to talk about, so there's really no <laughs> telling what could happen in the other 403 laps here at Bristol. I'm sure you'll be talking about Kyle Busch and what happened on lap two, but also what's about to happen here. Kevin Harvick has reeled in Ryan Blaney now, and he's been using different lines. He's yeah. been running the bottom. He's been running the top. I want to point out his line. If you watch him entering, he enters lower than anyone else that runs the top. He, he drives in a little shallower. Watch right here. He's going to have to go low for these lap cars. But once he gets back to the top and the 12 car gets back to the top, our leader, Ryan Blaney, Ryan goes in a lot higher, a lot wider. And I've watched, I've watched Harvick here for years drive that entry so shallow. Let's see if he does it right here. See how low he is? But he's going to drive up to the wall. See how much he gains right there? Oh, oh he slipped right there. Right there but... The advantage, though, is on entry. He gains so much on entry, and he maintains off, and he just keeps chopping away, chopping away, chopping away. Every time I try to run that line on entry, that little bit lower line, I would push from the center off. I couldn't get the car turned, but I don't know how hard it does it, man, but he always runs that shallow entry, even running the high line. He never enters right on the cushion. Another guy Boyer chopping mind. away, yeah, it's Clint Boyer. He's running the very bottom. He's committed to the bottom right now. How much the four car drives in? He just drives in so deep, but he's so shallow. I have no idea how he gets his car to turn so well. He's drove that line for years. Let's take a look at how he slipped up there in three and four. Man, he gets in the corner. Just right, touch, got the right rear a little bit in the, the, the rear, a little bit in the marbles. You see him, he glanced in the mirror. He knew he lost a lot of momentum, so he did that glance in the mirror to understand where Boyer was, making sure he hadn't caught a lot of ground on him, needing to run a particular line. Every driver is going to have that moment multiple times tonight. We're not going to see every one of them. But. Great ride to roll with Kevin. Watch his eyes. So right now, he's focused on the cars in front of him. He sees all that traffic. He comes off the corner. Now watch his eyes right there. That's where he checks the mirror. Every driver does it a little differently. He likes to check it. At, he's paying attention to the racetrack, the cars. Now, boom, right there, checks the mirror, understands where Boyer is behind him. You do that because that's a that's a way to tell whether you've, you've made a good corner. You know, you're going to change some of your corner. You're going to change where you live, where you get back in the gas. You're going to change the way you drive the corner and you look in the mirror to see if that was better. And the only way you can tell is whether you pull away from somebody or whether the game on you. Kelly. Yeah, Junior, you asked, how does Kevin Harvick get the car to turn that well? Well, it wasn't turning before they made that last pit stop. He said he was just way too tight through the middle and he couldn't put the throttle down on corner exit. So they made a chassis adjustment to help him out. You also notice the different lines he's running. Tim Fidoa as far as the high line's coming in. Now the low line is too, Marty. Welcome to the party, Clint Boyer up there in the third spot, trying to get the lead and trying to make that bottom line work, as you guys mentioned, up top. Boyer's crew chief, Mike Bugaravich, his wife, is expecting literally any hour now, but he made the decision to stay here. He said, we've had such a terrible weekend. We've thrown every setup at this car. I'm hoping it works tonight. So far, it's worked, fellas. Well, right now, these Fords are looking very strong up front. One, two, and three. Here comes Harvick. Now with the traffic in front of the 12, Blaney. Harvick gets to the door of Ryan Blaney. Can he make the pass? William Byron up top, holding up Blaney. Blaney's going to have to get aggressive with this lap traffic, or he's going to be trapped behind him. There he goes to the bottom. The bottom of one and two is going to work really well all night long. The bottom of three and four, not quite as good as the top. And Blaney hasn't really been messing with the bottom much. He's been on the top. Boyer and Harvick both have been trying it a little bit, so they may have a better understanding of what the car can do on the bottom. Now Harvick's going to try to jump up on the outside, trying to get around him. Who gets through this? This is the deal right here, though. See the double yep. zero car? That's going to be Landon Castle, and that's going to determine what happens right here with this outside lane. Can they get around him, make it three wide? How does this going to work out? That's going to cost Harvick here second position if he's not careful. And Harvick about to lose second to Clint Boyer. Landon Castle Look, Harvick's zero. gonna go through the middle. Gonna try to force. Oh, he's not. He's saying if you get aggressive like that, maybe he'll be able to maintain second position. He doesn't want to give it up to Clint Boyer. That's where Boyer's been running. He knows what his car's gonna do on the bottom. That's where he's been the best. So a car that's gonna wake and work on the bottom. I think Boyer in that 14 Cummins car, he has the best shot of doing it. 
There he is. He pulled up in front of him. While all this is happening, look at how far ahead Blaney is now. He's done past one of the he's done past one of the big three. Mark Trix Jr.'s a lap down. Now there are only 21 cars on the lead lap, less than nine laps to go in stage one. They've also run down Kyle Bush. He had a half a straightaway, almost a three-quarter straightaway on the leader. And remember with all this trouble in front of Blaney, he was leading this race in the spring and got in a wreck with lap traffic. See this three wide. Boy, you're trying to get by those two lap cars. That's Benedetto in the 32. He's trying to find the line. Watch the front end, watch the front end. Under seven laps to go. Clint Boyer up to second. Able to get by the four of Kevin Harvick. Now Ryan Blaney. Less than six laps to go to the end of stage one. Ryan Blaney, he doesn't have many stage points. He wants to win this stage. He has five, four stage points. So Clint Boyer has a few more than him. You see this bottom lane is starting not to work for Boyer. Look how much the run Harvick is getting on corner exit. Now we're going back to the nine of Chase Elliott. Oh, slow on the track is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And he looks like he's going to come to pit road before the end of stage one. He was in 12th position when he decided to dive onto pit road. Here comes Eric Alvarola in the 10. And he had come from 27th after that speed penalty on pit road, so he had a good race car. Marty. It's a flat tire for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., guys. They're on pit road right now with three laps to go here in the stage and one of the fastest cars that entire time. Harvick's got back by Boyer to second. Ryan Blaney, he's got a parking lot in front of him trying to get oh. by. Laps winding down, less than two to go, but here comes Harvick. And we know how aggressive Harvick will be to win a stage. Blaney trying to get by. Yeah, Truex also in there trying to get his lap back. Impossible. David Reagan, that 38 car, he's on the lead lap, trying to stay on that lead lap with only one lap to go. Here comes Harvick. Final lap. Coming to the checkered flag. Photo finish for the stage <laughs> ending. Blaney. Blaney does it. Harvick so aggressive. It was three one thousandths. All right, sorry. Three thousandths of a second that... Harvick missed winning that stage. I'd say that's a photo finish. <laughs> yes, it is. Wow. I don't know if I can take a whole lot more of this. <laughs> this is that was crazy. just stage one. Just stage one. Ryan Blaney. That is his fifth stage win of 2018. Fan favorite, Ryan Blaney is only driver to lead over 500 in 2018 without a win. And it was just that close for young Ryan Blaney. I put a spell on you. Yeah, because you're mine. With Chase ATMs. Serena can now grab cash on the go, all with the tap of her phone. Stop the things you do. No card, no problem. Life, live Serena's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Let's go places. Every big dream has a starting line. It's here where kids take that first step, first swing, first leap forward. Start your journey today at sportsengine.com. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. This summer, the world 
world's greatest thoroughbreds compete for a spot at the richest event in American horse racing. Wow, what a finish. The Challenge Series continues at the Traverse Stakes, Saturday, August 25th on NBC. The Flex Seal family, part of your storm preparation kit. Corner, just right, touch, got the right rear a little bit in the, the, the breeze, a little bit in the marbles. You see him, he glanced in the mirror. He knew he lost a lot of momentum, so he did that glance in the mirror to understand where Boyer was, making sure he hadn't caught a lot of ground on him. He needed to run a particular line. Every driver is going to have that moment multiple times tonight. We're not going to see every one of them. But. Great rider along with Kevin. Watch his eyes. So right now, he's focused on the cars in front of him. He sees all that traffic. He comes off the corner. Now watch his eyes right there. That's where he checks the rear. Every driver does it a little differently. He likes to check it at He's paying attention to the racetrack, the cars. Now, boom, right there, checks the mirror. So they're going to make a wedge adjustment, Kelly. Parker. And Marty, Eric Jones is going to pit out of eighth place. He was as high as third in that stage, but then came across radio screaming how loose he was. At one point, he thought he had a tire going down. They're going to do four Goodyear tires in air pressure and a wedge adjustment. Both sixth place, Eric Almaroa, and fifth place, Kyle Larson, did the same thing on this run. They went to the bottom. Almaroa used it to his success moving up. Kyle Larson got some spots back. But a complimentary goal planning session with TD Ameritrade. Every big dream has a starting line. It's here where kids take that first step, first swing, first leap forward. Start your journey today at sportsengine.com. Toyota, let's go places. Olympic champion Simone Biles goes for a record fifth women's all-around national title as the Team USA Summer Champion Series presented by Xfinity continues with the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. This week on NBCSN and NBC. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. time on NBC. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol. It's the Bass Pro Shops NRA Night Race. In two weeks, Darlington Raceway is going to host the official throwback weekend of NASCAR, classic paint schemes, all the great legends of the sport on hand. And you can be there too. Visit NASCAR.com slash tickets if you want tickets for that race. Should be a great one. Speaking of great ones, Rutledge Wood. You found a great place to party, right? Rick, you know I did. Dale Jr. told me I had to come find the best party at the track. Uh, and it's so good that there's even people here that look like me. That's so weird, man. <laughs> I like your plaid shirt. Uh, guys, old, old Smoky Moonshine took this roof, turned it into a party deck. And look around. Everybody's having a great time. Uh, look, we even got Cole Trickle fans here. I prefer the Kyle Petty fans when they have theirs. But, uh, guys, a great view down here. Look at all the action. It's right there on the other side of us. And the bar is huge, Junior. This is a great assignment, buddy. Junior, you sent him down there? Is that how that works? 
I'm just a little jealous. That's it all. looks like a lot of traffic up on top of that. I, you know, if, I'm a, if, I was, if I wasn't up here, that's where I'd want to be, having a good time, hanging out. Ryan Blaney down low, Harvick jets out front. Chase Elliott on the high side in the nine. Going to try that same line that Kevin Harvick was able to use to get by Blaney. And now Blaney slides in behind Hart or the nine of Elliott. Chase Elliott is going to take the lead away from Kevin Harvick at Bristol. And all that started with his spotter giving him that information on pit road. It takes a team to win these races. It's not just about the driver. Look at Kurt Busch running around the top, trying to make it three wide on the outside of his teammate. That thing looks crystal ready, man. Got tape on her. Ready to go. Make a piece of tape. Make you a little faster here. <laughs> He's making that outside work. His teammate Harvick. It's going to be forced into that outside groove. He's going to have to make it work, too, to stay ahead of Ryan Blaney. Blaney trying to come through on the bottom. Doesn't quite clear him off a of turn four. Joey Logano, this is off the left front of his car, trying to stay down in that adhesive that they added to the track. Guys are still trying to use it, so Clint Boyer said it was wearing out, but look at our leaders. They're all down in there trying to use it. Harvick struggling a little bit. He did this in a restart prior to this as well. Later in the run, though, he came on. Let's see if that's what happens this run as well. Push way to the top. You're talking about that substance at the bottom of the track. It's called PJ1. That's after the guy who now owns the company, PJ Harvey. It was originally designed as a high temperature coating. For NASA, and it has now gone on to be a part of drag racing and a part of NASCAR as well. Here comes Larson back in the conversation. The struggle, he was the fastest car in practice. Had a 50 lap run. Who runs a 50 lap run in practice anywhere, much less Bristol? But his car was so good, and he was still fourth on average with 50 laps straight. Back in the conversation here, he's fell back throughout the race, but. Looks like they've improved his car on that last stop. Junior, it's funny you mentioned average. Wow, that's close. He said, we're a long way from being, and he paused, and then said, average. So that's why they went to work so hard on it. Looks like they've made progress. That's a great shot from that side, Cam. And Bush got in front of Morrison and just went to the bottom. Keep that spot. He was right back to the top. Oh, oh yeah, Larson trying there. to stay in. He's still loose. He just slipped right up out of that groove. It's hard for these guys. They made this PJ1 a little narrow compared to the last race, and the, the guys are having a hard time keeping the rights in it, if at all. So they're only being able to keep the – sometimes they can keep the rights in it if they run real tidy around the bottom. Let's take a look at the replay. So he's slipping in right there. Hard time. Right down in the corner here. He's, he's not in it very much. And, and he's really loose. You gotta commit to it. You gotta get the image you're out of it. It's no grip whatsoever. Yeah, the middle is a no man's land. Yes. You either gotta be right on the bottom or right on the top. Nobody's car is gonna be driving, driving through the middle of the track very good. Larson goes back up high. Now Eric Jones in the 20. Those two fighting for the eighth position. Elliot Sadler has a half a second lead over Ryan Blaney. Then. It is six Fords in a row. Blaney, Harvick, Logano, Boyer, Kurt Busch, and Almirola. Chase Elliott, actually, race leader, sorry. All those guys still working the bottom out front. One guy that's top right now, third place, Kevin Harvick. Let's see these guys here battling. Rick Jones can't seem to get that bottom to work good enough. They're just switching back and forth. Man, I'm not, I'm not loving the top, so I'm going back to the bottom. I really love the bottom. Let's go back to the top. Look at the other car, listen to their team, listen to their spotters, tell them about lap time. What is faster? Sometimes they'll run the bottom of one and two, the top three and four. That ain't Trevor Bain. Trevor Bain's having a great race. Yes, he is. He's home good. state, Tennessee. He's a Tennessee guy. No fluke. He had good speed in practice. Him and his teammate both had great race cars this weekend. Think about this guy. He was asked to get out of this car some. Brought in Matt Kenseth, bringing in some experience. They've been struggling, trying to find some speed for all the Roush races, not just this car. And 
Trevor Bain having a great night. It's got to feel good to him, Marty. The pride of Knoxville, Tennessee, as you say, and he came out to the Tennessee fight song Rocky Top when he was introduced to the fans here at Bristol tonight. A little bit too tight for Bain, but what makes him the happiest, they started 23rd. It was steady progress to the field now in the top 10 for Trevor Bain. He's ninth. Trevor Bain looking very strong. I mentioned earlier Elliot Sadler. That was on my mind because Elliot Sadler announced earlier this week that he was going to be retiring from racing in NASCAR. Well, the very next day, another announcement comes out. Casey Kane, the driver of the 95, said he will also retire from NASCAR racing full-time at the end of the 2018 season. So a huge announcement for Casey Kane, who has been a staple in the Cup Series for almost 15 years now. Yeah, you're talking about a driver who has 18 career wins. He's won at the Brickyard, run a lot of big races, but we ran into him early in the weekend out in the bus lot, Rick, and he seemed at, at peace. I don't want to say that he was excited to retire, but look at that move to the bottom of the 78. He just seemed like he was ready to move on to the next chapter of his life and perhaps his driving career. I don't think he's done behind the wheel. Put a spell on you. Yeah, because you're mine. With Chase ATMs, Serena can now grab cash on the go, all with the tap of her phone. Stop the things you do. No card, no problem. Life lived Serena's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Let's go places. Want to dominate your fantasy football draft? Go to rotoworld.com to get your fantasy football draft guide, customizable cheat sheets, position rankings, extensive player outlooks, and more. rotoworld.com. Dominate your draft. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. It's gold! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. This is Darlington International Raceway, the granddaddy of them all. Let's go! I love Darlington. Everybody's always doing their throwback paint schemes. It's so fun to see the eras that they throw back to. It's almost like Halloween now. Everybody's dressing up for it. The TV broadcasters do the same thing. It's a big time weekend. It's a place where the best drivers that have ever come through the sport have won. It's going to be unbelievable. ACSN. It's Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol Motor Speedway. The last great Coliseum. These cars continue to rock it around this half mile racetrack. Kevin Harvick trying to chase down Chase Elliott. Great, we were mentioning maybe 20 laps ago how most everyone was around the bottom of the racetrack. Well, now it seems as the tires age, the cars are migrating to the top of the racetrack. We see the nine, Chase Elliott, leader of the race, ran the bottom to clear those two lap cars. But now it goes right back to the top. So, guys, it seems like maybe what you have to do is new tire at the bottom, old tire up top. Kevin Harvick seems to be making a lot of time running that top. If he can run that top, he's been able to run down Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott's struggling a little bit there with that lap traffic. Chase is still running the bottom, though. He hasn't moved to the top just yet. But as this four car gets closer, he's going to get that information from his spotter. He's probably going to be moving up there soon. One thing about this four car, we talked about it when they dropped the green flag. He did not have the grip he needed. You saw Chase Elliott, how loose he was coming off turn four right there. But as these runs go on, Kevin Harvick gets better and better. You can see that run he gets by running this high line. Watch what happens right here. They kind of stay even. Harvick starts to catch him. And now watch him gain down the straightaway. And Jeff, I think, and Steve might agree, the racetrack certainly has gone through a change here. The sun has gone down, gotten a lot cooler here at Bristol, and you can pretty much go through the top five. Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, all these guys saying their car has all of a sudden gone so loose. Got to keep up with the racetrack. That's one big key. It is hard. It changes because it, it, it rubber up, tighten up. They have a caution. They'll take all that rubber off. That changes the racetrack again. 
Harvick. The only problem is, is Chase running that bottom, he's having an easier time with the lap cars because most of the lap traffic is up high. So anytime, as, as Harvick closes in, he encounters the trouble with the lap traffic because his line is in the high groove. Look at Chase. Chase sees him. Chase sees him coming, so he's going to go, I'm a, I got a little space here. I'm going to go up there and try that top groove, see if I can find a little speed up there and slow down this this gain on the, that the four car has on me. Check this out. We have great cameras, so we get to go on board with both drivers and follow along on the racetrack. So look at Chase Elliott. He looks loose to me. He looks like he's going to have to turn the wheel back to the right in the middle of the corner or next. See that little correct? See that yeah. right there? He's too loose. He's just not making enough grip. Harvick, he's got his hands nice, steady, and smooth. His car's allowing him to do that. Look at the work Chase Elliott's had to do versus Harvick. This is only a matter of time. When you see two drivers like that, how much easier it is for Harvick right now versus Chase Elliott. Chase is running those, running that high line also for the first, you know, handful of laps. Doesn't really have it figured out just yet. Continues to struggle up there. Harvick goes to the bottom. The bottom of one and two isn't bad. There's some grip down there. Not quite as good in three and four. Oh, look at Harvick. He has a big moment there. Quickly recovers the car. Gets good information for the spotter. Sit back, relax, get back in the rhythm. Try to run that nine down again. Do a little assessment right now, making sure that it's not something wrong with the car. Maybe you just missed the line. Let's look here. He charges that entry. He's trying to get back to the throttle, get the throttle down. Steps the right rear out. Watch his hands. Clear. Hear the throttle. Yep. You hear that debris on the tire hitting the hitting the wheel well. He's out of the groove, up in the marbles. Take about a corner or two to get that off the tires, and you go back at it. You just at that point it's survival mode. You just don't wreck, don't wreck, and then you go back in the tank. And that's what I think is so fascinating. You know, you and I drove race cars, and Harvey can't quit. I mean, he can't just say, "Hey, my car's loose." And, you know, he's got to go in attack. He's got to find a way to deal with that issue that all of a sudden develops. He wasn't having it. We were riding along with him, and then boom! All of a sudden, he's loose. I want to take a look at tonight's Subway Fresh Take, Parker Kligerman. Hey guys, I'm here on the Peacock Pit Lot, and I know I've been in the car, I've been told it's really loud. It's incredibly loud up here. How about watch this? Take my mic away. And that's the thing, it's so loud. I know with the car it's intense, but up here on the lot, it's incredible. And I know one other thing, I was supposed to continue to talk about how loud it is, but this view of these cars coming through here in the finish. That's what 140 decibels sounds like. He is right there. In turn, we got trouble. The four car, Kelly. Harvick. Harvick. Kevin Harvick saying that he either has a right front slash or a wheel coming off, so he said immediately, I'm coming in. They're going to give him four Goodyear tires. Wonder if he got, when he got out of the group, he picked up some debris or ran over something with that right side. Had a slow leak. Yeah, well, he had a small, slow leak, and that's what caused him to get out of the group. It's really hard to know. Go from battling for the lead to being on pit road under green here at Bristol. That doesn't mean that we don't still have a battle for the lead. We take a look. Ryan Blaney has closed in on the leader, Chase Elliott. With a couple car links here. Ryan Blaney's moved to the top, found some great speed. He's back in the battle here. He was fading back in the third position. Racing with his good friend, Chase Elliott. These two guys are going on vacation this week. After this race, Cup Series takes a week off. Where you, where your dad and Terry going on vacation? When they <laughs> That's ready? right. Dad and Terry were going on a hunting trip. Then the old man spun him out. They didn't go hunting. <laughs> That'll one ruin a vacation. One of them went hunting. That'll ruin a vacation. <laughs> one of them was hunting Saturday night. Wow, look at that. What a great camera view that is, showing how difficult it is. These guys got their hands full. Look at that splitter bouncing across the racetrack. They are driving that groove all the way to the fence in turn one and two. Any small little mistake, they're right in the fence. Blaney backs up the center of the corner to get this great run on the bottom here. Gonna try the bottom, enter low, get all four tires in that sticky stuff if you can. 
This is where it's hard to get grip on corner exit because you have to turn the steering wheel so much harder. It's hard to get the rear tires to hook up. Man, he gave it a good shot there. That was a great try. I mean, smart to back the corner up three. He knows one and two on the bottom is going to have a little more grip. At the bottom. Oh, look at him putting the pressure on here. He's not done trying. He knows he's faster than Chase. Oh, look at him putting the They might not be going on vacation. <laughs> That might change quickly here if Blaney puts the bumper to him, but he's going to try to race him clean. Oh, wow. man. He's got him now. Hey, that's what you like to see, man. Two good friends, but they race hard on the racetrack. Look at the, blood, the brakes glowing on that 12 car up front. Blaney said he loved watching his dad in the Bristol night race. Now he's leading it. Ryan Blaney up front again at Bristol. Look at Amarola. Now we're all in the conversation now. Moving up to second place. Where'd he come from? Action's all over this racetrack. Go back a few laps ago. Timmy Hill, Daniel Suarez, contact. Come on back. I put a spell on you. With Chase ATMs, Serena can now grab cash on the go, all with the tap of her phone. No card, no problem. Life, live Serena's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Olympic champion Simone Biles goes for a record fifth women's all-around national title as the Team USA Summer Champion Series, presented by Xfinity, continues with the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. This week on NBCSN and NBC. NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. This summer, the world's greatest thoroughbreds compete for a spot in the richest event in American horse racing. Wow, what a finish! The Challenge Series continues at the Traverse Stakes, Saturday, August 25th on NBC. Caution here at Bristol for a spin by David Reagan. Pit stops happening right now for the leaders. Top of your screen, Joey Logano said his car was much better. He was running third when that caution came out. His teammate Ryan Blaney right behind him took the lead lap 193. At lap 170, he said, we are in trouble. The car is so loose. Clearly, it got better. And Chase Elliott was worried that he had a right front, maybe either going down or he had used it up too much. Car got way too tight at the end of the run, Parker. And a solid night for Eric Jones. He's run the top 10 that entirety of this stage. Just really loose inside that 20 car. He's been begging for them to tighten them up. And especially so he can tight, actually use that track bar to go up to help it turn in the center. Four tires, Dave. Fifth place, Kyle Larson has the best pit box. Will that help him here? Second place, Eric Almarola up into that second place position, running all over the racetrack. Slight adjustment for the 10. And Joey Logano, a great race off of pit row. The reason for the fourth caution that came out, the 38 of David Reagan. He was in the way a little bit earlier. The 12 got into him, but there you saw Eric Almarola get into the back. Around goes the 30. I put a spell on you. With Chase ATMs, Serena can now grab cash on the go, all with the tap of her phone. No card, no problem. Life, live Serena's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Racing fans, support your favorite drivers and gear up for NASCAR action with our huge selection of officially licensed NASCAR merchandise. 
Get all your NASCAR gear and apparel at shop.nbcsports.com. A fanatics experience. Yeah, I got some plans this summer. I'm going to travel around the country. Take in some familiar sights. I'm going to pay a visit to the old folks. Check in on the kids. Make sure everybody's getting along just right. <laughs> How you okay? Who's coming with me? Yeah, I've seen a lot of changes over the years. The cars have changed. The faces have changed. What I love seeing the most is all the stuff that stays true through it all. You still got the up and comers, the hard charges, and the best dang way to spend a Sunday. Oh yeah, and you still got me to deal with every week. NASCAR and Dale Jr. on NBC and NBCSN. Kevin Harvick, the 18 of Kyle Busch, the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. They stay on the racetrack. They take the wave around, go from two laps down to one lap down. That could be a difference maker throughout the rest of the night. And they know that a caution is coming up in 47 laps after the green flag comes back out. So that means that somebody will get the free pass. Legato won the race off pit road. He leads them back to the green. Look who's back in the picture, Kyle Larson in the 42 on the high side. And Joey Logano, his pit crew got him out first. Great stop by those guys. A little bit of damage to the back of the 22 of Logano. He's been hit. Kyle Larson, look at that higher line. Ryan Blaney just behind him. Chase Elliott is falling back to fourth. Now they all go down to the bottom. Larson was working the top. Trying to make a gain on that 22. Moving around, trying to find speed. Back to the top. The rest of the competition has to be a little bit worried right now. Kyle Larson is the highest scored lap down car running 20th. If great. he stays there, if Kyle Busch stays there, he can get the free pass, get back on the lead lap. Kyle, Kyle Larson, Larson jumping up on the top. And remember that. He's coming. Marty gave us a report earlier that he was way too tight. Other people now are saying the track's loosened up. Maybe that's played into Kyle Larson's advantage. He certainly had the fast car. Practice is puzzling why his car was so off the start of the race. Maybe the track had just, you know, with the rain and the re reapplying of the PJ1, just altered the track that much. Ryan Blaney putting a lot of pressure on Larson now. Look at that. Right on him. Look at the sparks off the 22 car. The patch up there on the top of turn two. It's rough. Bottom got the trailing arm mounts. See Amarola, I'm sorry, that's Chase Elliott. Amarola's behind those guys. The Stuart Haas cars do not seem to fire off well on restarts. He was dratted to the front before that caution. Now he's battling to stay in fifth. The youth movement right now in the top six. Logano, Larson, Blaney, Chase Elliott, Eric Almarola, Eric Jones, all the top six. Logano, he ran the bottom of one and two, the top of three and four. No real consistency yet in the lines these guys are choosing, especially on the newer tire. See, Larson knew he couldn't make that pass, just rolled in behind the 22, went back to the top, then immediately to the bottom. He gets a chance side. down here. If he can hit one and two just right on the bottom, there's good speed down there. This is where it's hard, trying to get the rear tires to hook up right there. So hard. But now he's committed to the bottom. Missed the very bottom right here, though. He, just didn't keep all four tires in that sticky gotta stuff. Jump up in front of Blaney here. Blaney's got to run. Blaney's to his outside corner now. Blaney may be taking this position. That all started back in three and four when Larson just didn't hit his marks. He was two feet higher than he needed to be while we're on the bottom. That's how precise you have to be, and it's so hard at this racetrack. Half mile racetrack, 32 degrees vacant. It's so fast. You drive in a corner just a little bit too far. Using too much throttle, and you can't hit your marks. That's what we saw Kyle Larson do. They're going 120 miles an hour, so I have to give them a little bit of leeway there. You guys say if he misses the line by six inches. Well, now that we're not doing it anymore, we get to be critical. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to be critical up here. Legato trying to hold off. Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, two very hungry drivers. Back here behind Legato.
Check this out. Five cars racing for the lead here at Bristol. Logano's altered his line just a little bit, making it a little bit of a lower, uh, backing up the center and turning and running off the bottom. This is to Kyle Larson. He's got some things to say. 22 is going to break that right side track by Murray's five mile like crazy. So Sparks, we were seeing on the turn right. two. Neither the trailing arm mounts or the right side track bar. Hit the ground across that bump. It's a pretty pretty significant bump. It's about the only place on the track you will bottom out the chassis. See, the air pressure's come up. It's going to bottom out less. It'll clear itself over time. Chase Elliott drives to the bottom. Larson trying to get to the bottom, trying to turn, and he back up, backs up the center of the corner. Slow down here, he turns, turns down the racetrack, trying to get a good run, get to that quarter panel. 17 oh, back no. on pit road, Marty. Yeah, contact with the wall again, guys, for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. It was a fantastic battle between he, Kyle Busch, and Kevin Harvick trying to get the free pass. They were really duking it out right now. Kyle Busch has that, but in the midst of that, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. made contact with the wall. He's going to put him three laps down. He's coming back on the racetrack. And back into traffic as there are just 28 laps to go in stage two. Joey Logano out front as we go NASCAR nonstop. You don't realize what a difference they make until you realize what a difference they make. The all-new Ram 1500. Why more people are switching to Ram than ever before. Now get an average $9,433 in total values on the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. Pizza Hut always has the $7.99 deal you can get delivered. So why go anywhere else? Don't just make it pizza night. Make it Pizza Hut pizza night and get your favorites delivered. Large two-topping pizzas, just $7.99. Order online now. One more way no one out pizzas the Hut. You know their world, but discover what happens on the other side of the street. Did you pick that outfit out yourself? I unsewed your mother and I made a jacket out of her. What a delicate little flower you are. And Mama the Carrie. We are not in the briar patch anymore, boys. <laughs> what you doing, boy? Turn that blood clock. Someone is killing puppets. Can you help me get out of here? You gotta try something. Out of the bag! Oh, with your shoe! The Happy Time Murders. Rated R. In theaters Friday. My burger goes best with mustard. Ketchup and mustard. Grass they beef. No, corn fed. On the grill. Now, flat top. Iceberg lettuce. Nah, arugula. Jalapeno. No way. Avocado, dude. Medium rare. Gotta be all done. Rio. Sesame. American cheese. Cheddar. Can I have a turkey burger? What? Turkeys of Thanksgiving, man. I like my burger with the coat. I'll agree to that. Strictly with the coat. Only with the coat. Coke and a burger. Come on. Oh, right. That's where you get the flavor. <laughs> Pizza Hut always has the $7.99 deal you can get delivered. So why go anywhere else? Don't just make it pizza night. Make it Pizza Hut pizza night and get your favorites delivered. Large two-topping pizzas, just $7.99. Order online now. One more way no one out pizzas the Hut. And for the Philadelphia Eagles, the dream has finally come true. Tell me when you're ready. We're always ready. Tell me when you're ready. We're always ready. I mean it, I say that you try to get it, but we're always ready. We're always ready. Well, Rick, it's that time of the race, 18 to go before the end of the second stage. That means NASCAR Fantasy Live. If you're going to go to the garage, if you're going to make a move, you have 17 more laps to do it. I really think, guys, the question is Kyle Busch. I'm sure everyone had him in his lineup. He wrapped. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. 
Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Wow. Oh, jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck. And there are cars. That's my Chevy. Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Awesome and proud. You no, know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. Solid. Yeah. A little loose in turn three. He's been struggling all night. Loose on corner entry. Solid on nine stop for 42 of the 12. Just an amazing save by... Blaney, great car control by both drivers in that situation. It allowed Chase Elliott to, to get around them both. And if those two guys don't do this great job of driving, not only do they wreck, but that nine car, Chase Elliott, he's in a wreck also. This is shot. Awesome. Look at this contact. Opportunity for the nine car, and he's up to second. Joey Logano, Chase Elliott. And it's Kyle Larson, Eric Almarola, Ryan Blaney, Eric Jones, Clint Boyer, Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch, Alex Bowman, all in the top ten. Chase Elliott's coming hard on Joey Logano. He has run him down. Chase Elliott knows he needs some stage points. He needs some playoff points. He's already in the playoffs, Marty. And, Rick, he also knows how this car progresses throughout a run. They start extremely loose at the beginning of the run, but then the car comes to them the longer they run. They've shown that all night long to try and take advantage here and steal the lead from Joey Logano. Under 10 laps to go now. Joey turning down the racetrack there. Dave, what you got? Hey, Junior, uh, earlier this week, Kyle Larson. was asked if the bottom grip isn't as good as maybe it's been in the past as he tries to make this pass. Is that advantage you because you work so well on the top? And Larson said, no, not necessarily. I want options. And you can tell because the 42 has been on the high line. He's been on the low line. He's been working both to try to make passes tonight. Here he goes back to the high side. We just saw Larson put the bumper to the back of the nine of Chase Elliott. Elliott goes back to the bottom of the racetrack. And Logano staying up high. Junior, you talked about Joey Logano's line, how unique it is. See how he turns down the corner. Look at this battle. It's a battle for the lucky dog, Kyle, Kyle Bush and Harvick. And Kyle was way ahead of Harvick. I thought Harvick was having a problem a little bit ago, but Harvick's running down. This is going to be the first car lap down to get that free pass. This will be a heck of a battle here. This will be like racing for the win. To get back on the lead lap and have a chance. It's the last known caution that these drivers will have in front of them. Less than five laps from the end of stage two. Pick your battle. Which one do you want to follow? The right side of your screen? It's who's going to get the free pass, Kyle Busch or Kevin Harvick. On the left side of your screen, who's going to get the stage win? The 22 of Joe Logano, the 9 of Chase Elliott. And Kyle Larson has backed off because he said it just went tight all of a sudden. They said be careful because that happened to the 18 and then he blew a tire. That's a smart move, Dave. If you're having a problem like that, you're probably not going to get the stage win anyway. Just back off a little bit, save your tires. But still just about 10 car lengths behind that battle for the lead. See, there he is in the screen on the right. Just taking it easy, trying to get to the end. Look at Harvick side by side, almost. I don't know what to watch here, Steve. On the left, <laughs> it's the race for the stage win. On the right, they're racing for the free pass. Right now, Kyle Busch has the free pass position, but Harvick fighting for it as they're in traffic. Logano also fighting traffic, trying to get this win in stage two. But here comes Chase Elliott on the back bumper. What will he do to get the stage win? Will he put the bumper to the 22? Coming out of the final turn, it'll be a drag race again. Logano is able to get it. Here comes the 18 to the four. Those two fighting. As soon as the caution comes out, the 10th driver goes by, and there it is. The 18 of Kyle Busch in position for the free pass. What a battle on this track. <laughs> that was awesome. Hey, one thing to note, so Kyle Busch will be the first guy lap down, but that puts Harvick as the only car one lap down right now. So if nothing strange happens, he should be the next guy to be in that position. 
That's Logano's third stage win of 2018. And, of course, with his win already this season, he's locked into the playoffs. So there's a playoff point helping him advance through the playoffs. But he wants to win here. Can world-renowned artist Red Hong Yi use the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank, all while creating a masterpiece made of tea leaves? Yes, but this isn't for just anyone. It's for the strongest man in her life. Life lived Red's way. Chase, make more of what's yours. Every big dream has a starting line. It's here where kids take that first step, first swing, first leap forward. Start your journey today at sportsengine.com. Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. Racing fans, support your favorite drivers and gear up for NASCAR action with our huge selection of officially licensed NASCAR merchandise. Get all your NASCAR gear and apparel at shop.NBCSports.com. A fanatics experience. one day offer Sonic's American Classic just got better get a 100% pure beef all American dog chili cheese coney or quarter pound double cheeseburger with tots for just $2.99 this is how you Sonic we mentioned at the top of the show just the atmosphere and the great racing that happens under the lights at this racetrack. And we just saw that was the end of the stage, and they were fighting for that win. Well, we picked two battles. There are about six other ones out there. Those in my, our minds were the most important. Rick, I think they might have heard us high five. I mean, that was some great <laughs> racing. We didn't know who to follow, guys. How about over in the driver's booth? Could you pick which battle you were supposed to follow? There was just, so much going on in both those. It's hard to pick which one. But amazing job by Kyle Busch. Uh, to, to go up against one of the best in business to be able to get that lucky dog. And that is what's so awesome about that Bristol. This race is all over the racetrack. The stage ends allow us to show it. Marty. Coming down pit road with the third stage win of 2018 for Joey Logano. He said he was tight in the center, loose on exit. Both of those got worse the longer he ran. Right in front of him, his teammate Ryan Blaney finished that stage in the third position. He said we were not as good that run as we were before. He said, I can't run the bottom because I'm too free on entry. And Chase Elliott, who finished second in that stage, the very first pit stall here on the back stretch, he said, I think we're in a good spot, but we need more. We're too free at the beginning of runs, Parker. Eric Jones pits out the seventh place position. He's been begging for more rear grip inside that 20 car. They do four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel, Dave. Middle of your screen, Eric Almirola confirmed what you guys said. Not good on the short one. Sloppy and bouncing, he called it. As for the 42 of Larson, he thought he might have a hole in the nose causing the tight condition. They're not going to repair here. Just four Goodyear tires and a Phillips Sunoco fuel. The race off pit road 22 will contain everybody. And a big stop there for the 10 of Eric Almirola as he comes off two spots better. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? Sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Wow. Oh, jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck. And there are cars. It's my Chevy. Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Awesome and proud. You know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. Yeah, I got some plans this summer. I'm going to travel around the country, take in some familiar sights. I'm going to pay a visit to the old folks. Check in on the kids. Make sure everybody's getting along just right. Oh, are you okay? Who's coming with me?
Yeah, I've seen a lot of changes over the years. The cars have changed. The faces have changed. What I love seeing the most is all the stuff that stays true through it all. You still got the up and comers, the hard charges, and the best dang way to spend a Sunday. Oh yeah, and you still got me to deal with every week. NASCAR and Dale Jr. on NBC and NBCSN. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. This summer, the world's greatest thoroughbreds compete for a spot in the richest event in American horse racing. Wow, what a finish. The Challenge Series continues at the Traverse Stakes, Saturday, August 25th on NBC. Normally, when we talk about the NBC Sports Toyota Camry on-track car, we're talking about this one. It was on pit road earlier, but tonight we want to talk about the 18 that was on the track. Well, this Toyota has been in all kinds of stuff tonight. On lap two, early in the race, Kyle Busch loses his car, spins out in front of the field. Jesse Little slams him in the door. Fortunately, didn't hit him that hard in the left front, but he came in, beat the fender up, got the defenders off the tire. Here he is in a battered car but still battling, stayed in front of Ryan Blaney to stay only two laps down. That was huge because ultimately the battle tournament in between him and Kevin Harvick to get one lap down, be the first car one lap down, caution comes out, and now Kyle Busch is back in the game in the lead lap. And that's got to be tough for the rest of the competition because he has seven wins in the Cup Series here at Bristol. So check this out on pit road. We saw this earlier. Everybody stopped. So look at this chaos. Three wide coming off pit road. Check out Kurt Busch. They all stop. They want to be in the outside lane. Kurt says, I'm not stopping. He drives, beats them to that line. Guess where he ends up? He ends up in six. So he's going to get that outside lane, the line that he wanted. That was given to him by people trying to get that lane, and he just took it from them. I love that. I hate those games. They frustrate me. So I like when a driver who doesn't play the game kind of falls his way. And added a lap of caution here before the green flag. Rutledge. Rick, I, I'm trying to live up to Junior's request to find the best parties in the infield. I'm at the pit road party deck. This is really cool. They set up bleachers out here so the fans can come in, have the total infield kind of hospitality experience. But, guys, the craziness that you see, every place in this track you get an amazing view. But a fan stopped me and said, hey, seriously, is Kyle Busch actually back on the lead lap? And I laughed and I told him, yes, even the guys in the booth can't believe this. This is nuts. <laughs> it is fun. And thankfully, your shadow or your impersonator is not hanging out with you on that party deck. Are we sure that wasn't him? Well, that's a good point. I mean, that guy looked a lot he like He had Rutledge. a blue plaid. Okay. Sure on earlier. So up front, Legato and Almarola. So a good stop by the 10 team. Got them some track position. The 9 of Chase Elliott still in the top four. Rick, the lights are bright. The sun is down. It's finally completely dark. The race started a little bit earlier than normal. Still just under halfway left and this is starting to look like the night race we remember the glow of the lights on the cars under the lights legato Almarola, and back up through the gears but Almarola not a very good restart chase elliott jumps up to second here comes kurt bush on the outside we've seen these new tires be treacherous all night they go in there to lean on grip they hope to it's there, and then it's not, and they slide up the racetrack. Here comes Jimmy Johnson in the 48. A little wiggle there out of Kurt Busch, and Jimmy Johnson up to fourth, now fighting for third. Big recovery from the 48. Was caught speeding earlier. He's rebounded all the way up inside the top five. Eric Jones in the 20, running in the tire tracks of Jimmy Johnson, but it's Joey Logano out front, Chase Elliott continuing to find that same line right through the middle. Eric Jones almost into the wall as he went very high. That shot was great. That shot was from Colossus. The big scoreboard, a camera rotating underneath the scoreboard. Gave us laps here at Bristol. You see, you mentioned Almirola continue to fight. His teammate bails out from the bottom line. He goes back to the top. Let's go back and take a look at that restart. You mentioned that 10 just didn't accelerate out of the zone. He was on the inside of the front row. The 22 is the control car. He can set the pace. You're going to see the 22 accelerate. And the 10 just 
Looks like he spins the tires. He just can't seem to get going. They backed him up. Almirola now in the sixth position. And fighting for that spot. He has Eric Jones on his outside as well as Kyle Larson. You look at his rear bumper. You see Blaney back there. Clint Boyer dives to the bottom. How about a great run? Alex Bowman right behind Clint Boyer in that white and blue Valvoline painted car. Great paint scheme. I love that 88. Great looking car behind him. The three. Trying to work on traffic as he comes through the... Man, it's chaos. Two and three wide. <laughs> yeah, trying to decide who do I want to focus on, and there's battles everywhere, Dave. Steve, it's a shame Eric Almirola lost those positions on the restart because his team, as we saw, picked him up two spots on pick road. In fact, Johnny Klausmeyer, the crew chief, told me last week in Michigan for the company, Stuart Haas Racing, the 10 team was best on averages all day long. They made a procedural change with their pit crew, not a personnel change, but a procedure that got them better. They're using it again here tonight, and it paid off there. Hopefully, he can have that payoff later. The easiest spots for a driver to get is when the pit crew can get them for him on pit road. How about a great run? Chris Buescher in the 12th position that 37. Bush's car, a little bit of damage on the right rear corner, but I mean, compared to some other cars in the field, it basically looks brand new. Kelly? Remember, he's had a fifth place finish here. And when I talked to his crew chief, Trent Owens, he said, Chris really excels at this track, so the rest is up to me. They felt like qualifying was just flat out a disaster for them. Much happier in the race room, and it is showing now. He's run as high as 11 tonight. Rick, I thought all of the big three were going to have trouble. They'd all tripped up. I thought it was going to be an opportunity for other drivers, but now they're starting to recover. But the 78 of Truex, he had a moment. You see right here on the bottom, entering turn one. Just that time, trying to get the power down the middle of the corner. Goes for a slide. The 19 of Daniel Scores, the 11 of Denny Hamlin, doing a nice job avoiding. But look at this. That's busy. Turning, I, I would have wrecked. Just turning to, clear, to the I right. Erect. Yeah, turning to the right at Bristol is bad. Yeah. Logano still out front. Elliott running second. Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Eric Almirola. Parker. Guys, I'm down here in turn one. I've got one of the coolest views at Bristol. And these drivers flying to turn one. You see the one from the bottom. Compressing in the racetrack on that sticky stuff. And the guys up top bumping into each other. This is an insane view. Gives you an appreciation for how tall this banking is and how close these cars are running together lap after lap. I just love watching this. And the biggest part is all the beat up crystal bruised and scarred race cars as they go by. It's awesome. Parker, I'm going to give you a little hint. Be careful. I've stood yeah. down there before. You can get dizzy very quickly watching those cars come by that quick. And they are going by quick. Again, turning laps under 16 seconds for a half mile. Did you mention Chris Busher in the 37? Trying to hold off Mark Truex Jr. They're running 12th and 13th. Legato, an eight-tenth of a second lead over Chase Elliott, Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, and Eric Almirola. Every big dream has a starting line. It's here where kids take that first step, first swing, first leap forward. Start your journey today at sportsengine.com. This summer, the world's greatest thoroughbreds compete for a spot in the richest event in American horse racing. Wow, what a finish. The Challenge Series continues at the Traverse Stakes, Saturday, August 25th on NBC. Yeah, I got some plans this summer. I'm going to travel around the country, take in some familiar sights. I'm going to pay a visit to the old folks. Check in on the kids. Make sure everybody's getting along just right. <laughs> now you okay? Who's coming with me? Yeah, I've seen a lot of changes over the years. The cars have changed. The faces have changed. What I love seeing the most is all the stuff that stays true through it all. You still got the up and comers, the hard charges, and the best dang way to spend a Sunday. Oh yeah, and you still got me to deal with every week. NASCAR and Dale Jr. on NBC and NBCSN. NBC.
BBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. Only 215 laps to go in Bristol. The Monster Energy Cup Series racing under the lights. And again, they'll take a week off, but the Monster Energy Cup Series will return to racing on September 2nd at Darlington Raceway. Throwback weekend. Track too tough to tame. NASCAR paying tribute to seven decades of racing. The Southern 500 that Sunday, September 2nd on NBCSN. Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Eric Almarola. They are running up into the top five. And Steve, I want to take this opportunity to hand it off to the driver booth. Let's give it over to Dale Jr. and Jeff Burton again. I'm excellent at taking a break, Rick. <laughs> there you go, boys. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. You guys had, a, had the last segment. We'll take this one. We've got a great battle for the lead. Watching Chase Elliott try to run down that 22 with Joe Logano. 22 still sparking. He still is. hitting that right side track bar. Pace is picking up as we get later and later into the race. But look at that turn down the corner that he has. He gets such a good drive off. Yes, he is able to use more throttle. Literally has better drive off. Running that straight line off the corner. Been able to hold this kind of uh, this kind of distance between him and Chase. And a little trouble lap traffic right here though. They're not they're not moving over. That's allowed Chase to close back in. Out on the bottom, that worked well for Chase. See if he can, now Chase will have to turn, go to the bottom, try to get all four tires to that extreme black stuff. That's where the grip is. Still not a lot of help. You sell the hand out of the window from J.J. Yaley saying, hey, man, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Chase wished he'd have let him go a corner before, but he didn't. And now Chase back to the top. See that turn now that Joey has? That's Joey's line, man. He runs that all the time. You go, you lift, you give up a little bit in the middle of the corner, get turned, go down the track. You're full throttle. If you use so much more throttle, and you carry that momentum down the next straightaway. So to do that, he has to slow here, right then there. turn, and now he's full throttle because he's not turning the wheel the way Chase is. Chase is still having to turn the wheel where Joey turns his wheel now. And now we can go straight off the corner. Well, that lap traffic, though, has been tough for Joey. Not quite getting around it as well. That entry is going to be tough. That entry real low and driving right up to the top of the racetrack was tough. Allowed Chase to get right here in position. It's just not a, it's, it's, it's hard to pass on the bottom in three and four. It's really impossible. Guys are able to get up underneath each other in one and two, but you can't. You don't have that same advantage in three and four on the bottom. Chase right on his bumper. Low contact. Pushed him up the track just a little bit. Whew. That took that exit away. Oh, you got a slide job. A slider right All here. right. Slider. What a move. I like it. Yeah, that's that's commitment. Take care of it now. That's from his crew chief. They've had some issues. Everybody's had a lot of issues with the left front tire rubber. Or the left front tire wear, actually. I like Chase Elliott, though, man. I mean, he started running well, and then he got that win at Watkins Glen. Who's to say that more aren't coming? They started getting stage wins. Started, started, things started happening for them, and here he is leading another race with close to 200 to go. Yep. Being reminded to take it easy. Get that lead. All right, now let's back it off just a little bit. Don't want to have an issue with that left front tire coming apart. I always hated when I slowed down and I went faster, right? Just said, you can back do it. it down, back this it down. Be, and, hey, hey, you didn't slow down. You went quicker. And this here, the place that happens, Because man. it's so easy to overdrive the it entry. It, it invites you to overdrive. It does. you got those huge banking corners. You're like, man, I can drive this thing in there. But sometimes you just lift a little early or let it roll the middle without as much resistance. You can actually make better lap time. Dave, what you got going on? 20 laps ago, the 19 of Daniel Suarez quickly came down pit road. He reported he thought he had a right front wheel loose when the team took all four off and examined them. The inner sidewall of the right front had a like a wear mark around it. So there was definitely something going on there. The wheel was not in alignment. Good thing they came down and changed it. That's a lot of stuff tonight. This is such a demanding racetrack, but... Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. We thought he was done on lap two. He didn't. They kept fighting. And right now, Kyle Busch has worked himself up to 15. 
That's enough time. Now, they can't have many more mistakes with only 197 to go, but if they have clean pit stops, if they have good restarts, he can win this race still. He's battling right there with Kevin Harvick, who still remains the first car lap down in position for the lucky dog. Keselowski is the last car on the lead lap at 18. He is about three quarters to maybe a full straightaway ahead of the leader. Marty. Hey, let's do our Toyota driver update, and they'll do it with Kyle Busch. We talk about the impressive march through the field. Currently right now, as you guys mentioned, in the 15th spot, you see Eric Jones running in the 8th position. Martin Truex Jr.'s had a nice rally. He's up in 11th. But to give you a peek behind the curtain with the 18 team right now, calm. That's the one word I would use. Ever since that incident happened on lap two, a lot of calm on the radio. No panic. And the theme, slow and steady. In 15th right now, but making their way up through the field and on the lead lap, Kelly. Right there, you see Kevin Harvick making that pass, and he is in that lucky dog position. An unusual request is last time down pit road. He asked for a left-hand glove. I checked in with the team. They said it was because he was sweating so much, those gloves were getting wet and a little bit slippery. So they handed him the glove the last time down pit road. What do you make of that, guys? That's that's really interesting, that report about wanting to change his glove, and he's been sweating that much. That's, that's really interesting, Kelly. Take a look at this graphic. Kyle Busch's afternoon started third, wrecked on lap three. Maybe thought he was taken out, but ran 182 laps, two laps down. Ran 59 laps, one lap down. He's back on the lead lap, currently 15th, still running great lap times. Has great, great speed in his car. Stuck behind some cars here, not really making much progression. It gets harder, Jeff, as you move through the field. You're going up against more competitive race cars. Not only is the, the cars get tougher, but the way the track is now with the top being the preferred lane, it's so much harder to pass. See, Aaron Camarola having some issues. Some smoke out of the right side, it looks like. Racing his teammate there. Yeah, a little bit of smoke. Looks like the left rear tire does have some, maybe some contact. Does it have all the letters maybe on it? It's hard to tell. He's had a little tire, you know, contact. He said he's leaking something. Yep, you heard it there on the radio. So he knows that, that could get slick in a hurry. Yeah, it looks like it's coming out yeah. directly behind the car. See how shiny that wheel is? Look how shiny the wheel is on the left rear. I think the smoke's coming from behind the car. Oh, man. Really loose. Yeah, it could Maybe. be. I mean, it could be a rear end gear. It could be a, an oil line. It could be something rubbing. We have the one. We had the one car with a hub earlier. Could be having an issue here with a 10 for sure. Calphalon Premier. Want to dominate your fantasy football draft? Go to rotoworld.com to get your fantasy football draft guide, customizable cheat sheets, position rankings, extensive player outlooks, and more. rotoworld.com. Dominate your draft. always doing their throwback paint schemes. So fun to see the eras that they throw back to. It's almost like Halloween now. Everybody's dressing up for it. The TV broadcasters do the same thing. It's a big time weekend. It's a place where the best drivers that have ever come through the sport have won. It's gonna be unbelievable. Yeah, I got some plans this summer. I'm gonna travel around the country take in some familiar sights. I'm gonna pay a visit to the old folks. Check in on the kids. Make sure everybody's getting along just right. <laughs> Kyle, you okay? Who's coming with me? Yeah, I've seen a lot of changes over the years. The cars have changed. The faces have changed. What I love seeing the most is all the stuff that stays true through it all. You still got the up and comers, 
the hard charge, and the best dang way to spend a Sunday. Oh yeah, and you still got me to deal with every week. NASCAR and Dale Jr. on NBC and NBCSN. John Deere Gator Utility Vehicles. Go Gator. Subway Restaurants. Toyota. Let's go places. And by Credit One Bank. The credit card perfect everyday purchases. 177 laps to go and counting out front. It's Chase Elliott. And Kurt Busch right behind him for second. Let's go through the field. Brought to you by Hardy. Hardy. Chase Elliott with almost a three and a half second lead right now, Rick. And a big conversation between he and Alan Gustafson coming into the week, keeping up momentum on the racetrack. Eddie DeHaan continued that on the radio. Take a listen. It's been a really nice job on rolling in momentum with traffic. It's good. Going to need to do that at the end. That's a key factor for Chase. Got to keep momentum here at Bristol. Kelly. Well, Kurt Busch has been the model of consistency. Five straight top ten finishes, but yet to win this year. His crew chief, Billy Scott, told me if we keep running top ten, top fives, that win will come. Kurt, a five-time winner here at Bristol, running second now, Marty. One of the fastest cars on the racetrack for the last ten laps has been Clint Boyer. And his crew chief, Mike Bigeravich, told me I like the speed. I don't like the execution we've had lately. That's got to get cleaned up here in the regular season, Parker. Artie, he's not going to be able to hang on for long with that 20 car coming as fast as he is right now. He's been three tenths faster than the leaders over the last 10 laps. He's been uh, uh, really liking that car right now. Remember, he came so close to winning this race last year, Dave. Eric Almarola still flying, but still smoking. They had high expectations coming in here, finishing sixth in April, but no further report on what it might be for Eric. Marty? Dave, for Joey Logano, who's led 95 laps tonight. He has fallen back to the sixth edition car. Way too free on this run for Logano. Trying to run that middle line that he likes to run because the top for them doesn't really work here. Also behind him, Ryan Blaney, his teammates at his car, too free to begin this run. They've lost a ton of track position here for Ryan Blaney, who did a cool thing last night. He watched the Xfinity Series race here for Bristol in the stands with the fans, Kelly. 19 career wins for Martin Truex Jr. None of those have come on a short track, but that's not for lack of fast race cars, as his crew chief told me. They just have not had good luck on these short tracks. Today they got caught up in that lap three incident, but a remarkable recovery running eighth right now. And behind him is Jimmy Johnson. It's kind of a opposite situation for Jimmy, who's been so strong here at Bristol with a pair of wins and the best finishing average for the last four years is spotter Earl Barber telling me, heck, this is just Jimmy's kind of a place. It's a bull ring. It's fast, exciting. He loves this place. And behind him, there's Chris Busher. What's at stake for this small team? Well, they are in a close battle for 25th and points. They told me that would be huge for this team. And they're running 10th, a really solid uh, day for this 37 team, Rick. Hey, Steve, remember the word intense that I used earlier and intensity? Could that be ramping up a little bit? Oh, yeah, that was a great update on the top 10. Well, one more update, the weather. You know, rain came through earlier today, and then it was going to be spotty. And as you can see, weather's starting to build right around the center of that those circles, right where the track is, plus some weather off in the distance. So with 165 to go, these crew chiefs and drivers are going to have to decide, are we racing to the completion? Are we racing to a weather issue? Just one more question mark. I mean, sure, it's a night race. Why not? Well, Steve, as far as fuel goes, 170 laps is about where they are fuel window. So they're inside their fuel window now. They will have to come from the start of this final stage before they get the checkered flag. Yeah, they'll have to pit. What they're also in the middle of is the longest current green flag run. They've run 74 laps. So we've heard a little communication about tire wear. We'll see if it has any issues. There's definitely an issue on the 10. We're hearing that NASCAR is going to black flag them. That smoke continues to pour out. And it looks to me, guys, that it must be some fluid. I mean, you see the bumper cover, even though it's black, it's kind of changing colors right here. It's a great shot. You can see the Steve, of course, Eric fires back. Well, it seems to be getting better. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. It seems to get better. Unfortunately, for the car following this, is, I believe, off over the 22. And you see how the screen starts to get covered with moisture. The lights start to shine a little bit differently. So definitely some fluid yeah, coming out of the tank. He said black flag for lines crossed. The second they do that, they're no longer scored. So it's running laps for running laps yeah, at that just, point. Just for your own fun. And so they're going to bring him onto pit road and find out if there is fuel coming out or not 
fuel fluid coming out of the 10. So he comes off the racetrack for a black flag. He was running fifth, so Eric Alvarola is very disappointed that he has to come off the track. Dave, here he comes. And of course, the crew will go and change the tires as they're going, and they'll look, they're looking up at the front. Which, Steve, why would they do that? Well, I believe that's where the fluid's coming from. It might come out from the tail, but you see as soon as they open the hood, the rear smoke gear comes out. out then. Nothing driven out of the rear that we can see. Yeah. So unfortunate for the 10 of Eric Almirola. You lose laps so quickly, even if they can repair it. Their chance of winning the race tonight is definitely over. NASCAR nonstop from Bristol. Watch your back, Cole. <laughs> Introducing the two for five dollar mix and match deal from McDonald's. Mix your choice of two favorites with the new two for five dollar mix and match deal. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, hey Martin. It's going not great. I need to get you guys back to 100%. My work here is done. Five hour energy. Get back to 100%. If you didn't get your wireless plan from US Cellular, you've probably been blown away by hidden fees too. And not in a good way! They hit you with an activation fee and monthly connection charges! Then they throw in data overages! But US Cellular has no hidden fees. Plus unlimited data for $40 a month. Right, my man? So get U.S. Southern. It's a stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Introducing the two for five dollar mix and match deal from McDonald's. Match your choice of two favorites with the new two for five dollar mix and match deal. Section PU 402, row 41. Jimmy Johnson, Section 104, row 4. Out of the first Section 25, row 3. What a year for Bubba. Section 0, row 25. Section 156, row 4. Kurt Busch, the million on the last track. Section 233, row 1. Martin Truex Jr. wins. You get a seat, but we doubt you'll ever use it. Grab your seats at nascar.com slash tickets today. It's Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Bristol, the Bass Pro Shops NRA night race, and the caution has come out, and that would be the 51. Pete Sorensen, and a lot of damage to the right front after he got into the wall. Come down, come down, come down, come down, come down. You're done. And hard turn behind the wall. Potentially a break for Kyle Busch because we heard just a couple laps earlier that he was having an issue and needed to get to pit road. Take another look. There's 51 again of Reed Sorensen up into the wall. Yeah, I have to wonder on a long run. This is the longest they've run tonight if he didn't have some kind of a tire problem. Good break for Keselowski. He's the first car lap down, but he had gotten a lap down, and that made Harvick the second lap car lap down, so he did not get the pass here. Went to Keselowski. And crew chief, this puts everybody into their fuel window once they come down to pit road, change more tires. Change more tires and continue to make adjustments. We're hearing all these drivers talk about the track and how it's changing. You hear the pit reporters talk about whether the sticky stuff's still working, whether the top's the best, the new tires, old tires. are going to continue to adjust. That's what makes this night race so difficult. The track never seems to stay the same. A couple of new players up in the conversation. Eric Jones was in fourth place there. Truex battled his way up to fifth. Guys starting to show up here late in this race. New names, new faces up in the top ten, up in the top five. Now it's 
Bowman. He had to pit under green a little while ago. That put him two laps down. He'll stay out right here and get back to one lap down. That was a tough break. He was having such a good night. Yeah, you have to think about Ricky Stenhouse and those guys and trying to capitalize tonight. There's going to be a chance for them to do that. Here comes the field. Kelly. And Junior here on the backstretch, we'll see the 41 there of Kurt Busch come to his pit stall. He said he was loose for a while, but then it got pretty tight. Overall, though, he felt pretty good about the 41. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Four tires and fuel, Marty. Second place man, Clint Boyer, a little halfway down the backstretch pits here, Kelly. He said his car, very good, especially in the early part of the run. No changes for that crew for Chase Elliott up here at the front of the backstretch pit stalls. He said it's very similar to what we've had before, but I honestly feel like the track is working in our favor, Parker. Eric Jones in the middle of your screen there, pits from the top five, finally found the, the feel he was looking for. Four Goodyear tires, Stoko Fuel. Denny Hammond has not been able to find the field. They've been working on that race car all night. You can see it all patched up from that early damage on that lap two wreck. And then Austin Dillon started at the rear, and he's finally started moving forward using the top line, looking for the feel he needs up there. Race off pit road, won by Clint Boyer. And so Clint Boyer has never won at Bristol before, a best of second. Winning stage one, it was Ryan Blaney. Then stage two, Joey Logano with a great finish gets that win. Can Clint Boyer hang on and get his first Bristol? Everybody's always doing their throwback paint schemes. So fun to see the eras that they throw back to. It's almost like Halloween now. Everybody's dressing up for it. The TV broadcasters do the same thing. It's a big time weekend. It's a place where the best drivers that have ever come through the sport have won. It's going to be unbelievable. Want to dominate your fantasy football draft? Go to rotoworld.com to get your fantasy football draft guide, customizable cheat sheets, position rankings, extensive player outlooks, and more. rotoworld.com. Dominate your draft. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. on Golf Channel. NFL kicking off the regular season on Thursday, September 6th on NBC. Philadelphia Eagles begin their defense of their Super Bowl title when they host the Atlanta Falcons. You know, back in 1961, the first race was run here at Bristol, and you can see in the infield, there's a football field. Well, that's because there was a game played in 1961, an exhibition game between the Redskins and the Philadelphia Eagles. And take a look at that ticket. The world champion Philadelphia Eagles. That's because that was the last time they had won the world championship or Super Bowl. I actually talked to one of the players in that game, Tom Osborne. Yeah, that name might sound familiar. He was a college football coach at the University of Nebraska. Marty. Hey, Rick, Ryan Blaney had to come back down pit road, loose lug nuts on the right side. He'll start tail into the field for this restart. That's a great catch. Get that under caution, not find out under green flag. Too wide. Here they come. Clint Boyer on the outside. Chase Elliott on the inside. Boyer with a great start. Here comes the 78, Martin Truex Jr. After a good stop on the high side, he moves up to second. He'll challenge for the lead as they go on three. Number one at a short track, Martin Truex Jr. Fighting now to hold on to that second spot as Joey Logano works the middle of the track once again. 
trying to get to the outside of Martrex Jr. A little further back this field, you see the white car, the 18. They cannot get that car full of fuel. They love it to be on the outside helmet with this restart. Logano had faded on that last long flag run. Restarting on the outside, though, he's back up in the second position. Guy's still using that bottom. I'm surprised it's late in the race. That man, Kurt, he just he had a problem. His car just went straight to the top from the bottom. <laughs> Trying to get underneath Kurt. Rex gets a great run off the two. Hard to throttle. All these guys still using that bottom groove on new tires. To keep that in mind, if we get some late, oh, little bobble by the 22, Logano. Oh, Truex right in his bumper off the of turn two. That's old school Bristol there on the That's bottom. Right. What's wrong with that? Truex can make that bottom work in one and two down here and clearing. Not, not so fast. Just about. Logano holds position on the outside quarter. Look who else is driving up into this. In fifth place. Austin Dillon, who had to go to the rear of the field, started in the back. He's had a good night taking care of his car. Second place or a top five finish last week. Is this the race Martin Shrek Jr. finally gets that short track win now as he's moved up to the second spot? Nobody's really been able to take you know, claim of this race just yet. And we had so many different leaders. Boyer out front for the first time tonight. Truex trying to run him down. Truex really hasn't had a lot of speed. He hasn't had speed in practice. Seems like they've improved this car throughout the night. Making adjustments. Wheels pretty smooth, throttle inputs seem pretty smooth. Missed the middle just a little bit there, but you don't hear any feather in the throttle. Doing much work there. Not working the steering wheel too much. What I always find interesting, Junior, is you see Clint Boyer out front, Martin Truex Jr. in second. Really no pressure coming from behind for either one of these two. When do they decide to go to the top? They, you don't want to be the first guy to go to the top and run slower. So I think what's happening right now is the spotter's watching Chase Elliott running back there in third, and Chase Elliott has moved to the top. If he starts making ground, the spotter's going to say, hey, nine cars coming, now move to the top. But until then, there's really no need to move. Chase was a tenth faster than the leader. Durex went to the top down there in three and four. Chase again, a tenth quicker than the leader. Leader uh, Clint Boy run the bottom, Chase on top. Truex struggling to find speed. He's a couple tenths off right now. Moving around, improving his speed just a little bit. Kelly. And just as you guys saw the nine of Chase Elliott move to the top, Clayton Hughes, the spotter for Martin Truex Jr. told him just that. He said the nine is up top and he's gaining ground. There you go, that's the signal. You know the top's going to come in. You know it's going to happen. You just don't know when. Marty. The guys behind him, Chase Elliott, you saw him move to the top. And Junior, you're right. He was much quicker up there. But that was not the plan for the 19. They felt like late in the race, the top wouldn't be the place to be. They kind of worked on the bottom a little bit more. But you've got to be flexible here at Bristol. You can see Chase running the bottom, running the middle, running the top. Wherever it creates speed, that's where that nine's going. Even this far behind, Martin Trix Jr., he can feel that dirty air. He can feel that loss of downforce on the front of his car. He has a little problem there missing the bottom there. But he can feel that, so he goes where the 78 isn't sometimes. If he needs to run the bottom, he'll run the bottom. He says his car works well on the bottom if he needs to be down there. And Boyer's going to have to answer the move from Truex. You can see Truex is starting to catch him. He's going to have to answer and get to the top. Joe Logano is part of that conversation as well. He's keeping the pressure on Chase Elliott, so Chase can be, you know, he can look around, but not a whole lot. He doesn't want to make a mistake and put his car in the wrong line. Look here, he's getting a good run up underneath the 78 of Truex. So he's going to Logano a chance to try to drive underneath Chase. Yeah, so if, if, if Chase changes his line and something doesn't work, he opens himself up to lose that position. You cannot afford to lose positions. 
experiencing around on this racetrack. You just can't. It's too late in the race to be able to give up that spot to a car like Joey Logano. So he has to drive with a little bit of defense and also trying to, look at that, got the gas good there through the center of the corner. He's got all these guys are driving the corner so differently. You can see Logano with that low exit. Truex has a similar exit as well. Kind of stop the car in the middle and turn down and run off the bottom. Watching this great battle for this lead, four-way battle. Here he comes. Kurt Busch, that pass right there is for sixth place on the very top. I'm telling you, he's coming. Kyle Busch is Kyle definitely going to be sorry. Yeah, he's definitely going to be a part of this finish. If, he, if they can go mistake-free on, on pit road, they should be a you know, part of this battle for the finish of this race. Marty. And Junior, pretty amazing on the left-hand side of your screen. That's a battle for the lead. Four cars all in one shot. Pretty amazing. And you talk about that line, Junior, the 22 seems to take as the battle for the lead heats up here with Boyer and Martin Truex Jr. Truex looks like he's going to get that lead away from Clint Boyer, but Boyer using that high line to try and get it back, guys. A great battle here. But back to Logano. He drives off the hill. TJ Major, his spotter, has been on him. Pull it off the hill, drive it off the hill, a little bit different line, Junior. Absolutely. They're all starting to use that line as well. We've seen it from Truex as well. We're seeing it from Boyer. Stop in the middle corner, turn down, and run off the bottom. Let's drive down the hill. Even put the left rear, if you can, in that PJ1 to get a little more traction and forward, forward bite to be able to use a little more throttle. You can see where Truex is faster. They enter the corner about the same speed, but watch right here. Truex rolls a little better, is able to turn. Get that run. He's going to get alongside a Boyer. Now Boyer's just got to not overdrive the entry. Trying to beat him off the corner. Give up the center and roll that speed on corner exit. Let's listen in to Clint Boyer's radio. Make sure the bus ground on you three and four on the exit. Center out. Off there. You need to run high three and four. Low and one and two. That's coming from the spotter, Brett Griffith. Brett's up there watching, giving Clint Boyer that information. You can see Truex is a little bit faster. He's but a lot faster. He's really put the pressure on. It's going to be hard to complete that pass. He's going to have to pull that slide job. We've seen it a few times before. We just got to commit to drive in there. And like Chase the Elliott. nine of Chase Elliott is doing. Dove to the bottom of the racetrack. Now Chase Elliott in the mix for this fight for the lead. Next time, Truex. Look at that run Truex gets. Right this here. Is opportunity. This is it. Right on there. Right up in the front of the 14 car. Force, your, force yourself in that top groove. He's got a good run now. Yeah, he's, got, he's got some. See if he can make it work. We're rolling the middle well. Going to pinch him off on quarter exit. New sponsor tonight, Cummins on Boyer's car. Trying to give him a good run. Boyer fighting up front. Has never won here at Bristol. But that means also the 78s of Martrex Jr. has it either. As we go NASCAR nonstop. It's simple. People count on you, and you count on your truck. So we built you the most capable line of Ram trucks yet. The all-new Ram 1500 delivers best-in-class V8 towing. The Ram 2500 has best-in-class gas towing. And the Ram 3500 gives you best-in-class fifth-wheel towing. That's why more people are switching to Ram than ever before. Now get an average $8,659 in total values on the 2018 Ram 3500 Limited Crew Cab with a Cummins diesel engine. Oh. Just gotta make it what you want. Best tailgate. Brisket. No, real football. Y pollo asado. Poops and wings. Dude, subs. Hot dogs. Chili dog. No, Dodger dog. It's gotta be crawfish. Now you talk burgers. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day. Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. Grab yourself a Coke. It's tailgate 101. The first race first. in the NASCAR playoffs is at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. He's all in. 
when the green flag drops on the inaugural South Point 400. The record-breaking speed fest starts on the dirt and speeds through the top three series. Family price tickets are going fast with kids only 10 bucks on Sunday. Get them now at LVMS.com. And for the Philadelphia Eagles, the dream has finally come true. Tell me when you're ready. Tell me when you're ready. I mean it, I say that you got to get it, but roll is ready. As we saw in NASCAR nonstop, Boyer has been fighting to keep Martin Truex Jr. off. Let's take a look at tonight's Ram Trucks. Prove it to last. Kyle Busch, Rick, accident early. Can he continue to rebound? Currently in the fifth position, battling with his brother Kurt for the fourth place spot. Who's going to take control of this race? There's been so many different leaders tonight. Right now, Clint Boyer leads. But after all these pit stops, restarts, seems like there's a different guy up front each time we see. It is every time. And then who can take advantage if we get that caution late? Who can be in the right light line? Who can push the issue and make something happen to put themselves in position to win this race? Kyle Busch has been so impressive, Steve. He has moved up continuously. Thought he had a problem before that last caution came out. Now he's up into the top five, trying to get the position away from his brother. And this is what I'm waiting to see. We had this conversation. You know, it's one thing to pass the cars back in 15th or 10th. When you get into the top five, these are the tough cars to pass currently, plus nine positions on this run alone. Just cleared his brother, Kurt Busch, for the fourth position, and I don't think he's done there. This car doesn't take off great for the first two or three laps, but once the tires get just a touch of age on him, his car continues to work the bottom of the racetrack, the top of the racetrack, very versatile. In relation to the race leader, he is now only two and a half seconds back. The next one he has to try to get by will be the nine of Chase Elliott. And Rick, we talk about the accident, but it was even before that where Kyle Busch kind of set the tone for the night at driver introduction. They stay there! That's the tone, and he's the guy. He, I think he drives off the noise, the booze, the cheers. He doesn't care. He just wants to be the guy that sparks a reaction, and he absolutely sparks a reaction from this crowd. He's definitely sparking a reaction, and right now, Clint Boyer trying to hold off that 78. As he went along here, Clint Boyer actually got away from Martin Truex Jr. Clint's got that outside figured out. Martin maybe used his tires a little bit much trying to get by him and maybe let him cool down a little bit and it'll make another charge. I think car for car, Truex definitely has a little more speed. Lap traffic's been a little more difficult at times for Truex. You think it'd be tougher for the leader. He's the guy that everybody races. I don't want to lose a lap. But look at the way Boyer goes to the corner there and just puts distance on Martin. He goes to the bottom around that lap car, William Byron. And now Martin has to shorten up his exit. That's a couple car lengths. You, you have to get, you know, fight to get back. Boyer just seems to be able to get around that lap traffic. The other thing, this racetrack is going to continue to change. It's only 89 to go, but this line that they're running right now when they're turning low off the corner doesn't mean the track is going to continue to allow them to do that, Marty. Kyle Busch trying to get to Chase Elliott. That would be for the third position. Can't overstate what an amazing rally it's been for this team. For way of review, the accident on lap two. They were down two laps at one point, almost down three laps with this 18 car. And let's take a bigger picture view at it with the big three. What would a win tonight for Kyle Busch mean after the win by Kevin Harvick at Michigan last week? If they can come back from this, nearly being down, Three laps and win tonight. Momentum going into the playoffs with only two regular season races left after tonight. He is flying. I mean, he's the fastest car on the racetrack. Doing a great job working around lap traffic. You see he's pushing hard sideways off turn four. Very safe. Wins the last six short track races. Kyle Busch. 
He's won two in a row here, trying to make it three. He's only 1.7 seconds back from our leader. I mean, he's going to get there in a hurry. No time at all before he's up there working on Martin Trex Jr. for second. There's Truex. There's our leader. Trying to put a lap down uh, on the two car. Brad Kozlowski. Harvick's right now the lucky dog, but if Brad Kozlowski goes another lap down here, that'll make him the lucky dog. And Harvick just can't get that opportunity, that break, to get his lap back because he's just as fast as Kyle Busch. That's the same thing that happened in the last sequence as they got to the two car and lapped him and took Harvick out of that position. It's a great battle for fourth. Eric Jones had a great long run car. You've talked about. Kyle Busch's car and how it doesn't fire off. Jones' car doesn't either, but he really comes on on the long run. Look at him pressuring nine car Chase Elliott, trying to let Chase know, hey man, I don't want to waste a lot of time here. Right on him, putting a bumper to him. That's a hole, oh, man. Send him into the corner. <laughs> man, that's the worst. Get run into on entry. You're not going to miss none of this battle right here. Go to break. Are you flying off the cars? Might have a caution with that debris. We'll see it all right here on Nonstop. Hey! That's Norris. Can you sign my Tacoma? I'll be glad to. <laughs> From the fist of a legend rises a new action star. A hero who's there to save the day and the night. So fearless, so rugged, he's tough as Chuck. You replaced me with a truck? Toyota, let's go places. Pizza Hut always has the $7.99 deal you can get delivered. So why go anywhere else? Don't just make it pizza night. Make it Pizza Hut pizza night and get your favorites delivered. Large two-topping pizzas, just $7.99. Order online now. One more way no one out pizzas the hut. Cheesy grooves, deep flavor, deep crunch. It has grooves like deep valleys of flavor. The grooviest cheese mountain ranges. It's crunchy like a crater. It's a cavern of crunch. And bold like a volcano of cheese. Or a bold cheese waterfall. Cheesy grooves, cheese it like never before. Pizza Hut always has the $7.99 deal you can get delivered. So why go anywhere else? Don't just make it pizza night. Make it Pizza Hut pizza night and get your favorites delivered. Large two-topping pizzas, just $7.99. Order online now. One more way no one out pizzas the Hut. always doing their throwback paint schemes. It's so fun to see the eras that they throw back to. It's almost like Halloween now. Everybody's dressing up for it. The TV broadcasters do the same thing. It's a big time weekend. It's a place where the best drivers that have ever come through the sport have won. It's going to be unbelievable. It's been an incredible run by Kyle Busch. Oh, the AT team, he got into the back of the 70 game. Martin Truex Jr. slamming into the wall. He hits again. Contact made. Kyle Busch got to the back of the 78. The 78 spins and brings out the caution once again. Also involved, the 7 of J.J. Yaley. Tire completely coming off the wall, and you just hear Martin Truex Jr. say, that hurt. So the crew getting to Mark Trex Jr. He'll take his belts off. That 
hurt, and also hurt his feelings. Yeah. You know, sit there running second with a shot to win this race. Obviously frustrated. so much into racing, means so much to you, and something like that happens, it just runs all through you, man, makes you so mad. So much commitment had been made by Mark Trex Jr., still looking for that first short track win, was in the best position he's been in for a long time to get it, running second, and there we see J.J. Yaley able to just squeeze out of the driver's side of that car right up against the wall. Let's take a look at the replay here. Coming off turn four, Kyle Busch. Tricks taking it. I come down the track a little bit, but really did turn into the 18 car. J.J. Yaley just trying to get by. Nothing he could do. Bison 78 come right across the racetrack. Huge impact. And yeah, that angle into the inside wall is, is an odd one and a tough one. Just barely touches him there. Yeah, Martin's not going to be happy with that. I don't think Kyle did it out on purpose by any means, but certainly coming off turn four and thinking the 78 was going to leave a little higher up the racetrack. Just hard wrecks, you know, the, even at short tracks going 100, 115 miles an hour, those are hard, hard shots. You know, those two, they normally work really well together and you get this late in the year and these kind of incidences, you know, getting ready to make the playoffs and it can wear on a relationship. I mean, those, they, those two teams, they work well together. They work well with Joe Gibbs and Ernie Chiro, but, you know, those things happen. It hurts, hurts those relationships. We've seen these two guys get into it before at Indianapolis last year, late race restart. They've been working really well together and they decided it was time to race the result of that 78 thought they'd been working well together they really didn't want to race at that point thought they could just keep playing along and staying in front of everybody else and you saw the post race what happened between the two teams showing his frustration. Party. And Rick, for what it's worth, Kyle Busch came on the radio and kind of groaned after all that happens that the contact was so light, clearly indicating he did not mean to do that and did not want that to happen. For what it's worth, Cole Pern came down to the 18 pit box, had a conversation, a quick conversation with Adam Stevens, kind of ended it with a thumbs up, but you could tell he was not happy when he walked away. Short track Bristol racing. People are going to leave here. They're going to be mad. For second. I mean, that you got to remember, that they're fighting for yeah. second right now. Well, I think Jeff's point is well-founded that two races to the playoffs. Right, Jeff? We leave here two more. And then they're going to be racing for a championship. And and, and we've seen at Furniture Road Team, Joe Gibbs Racing, the Toyota Connection, they work so well together. They continue to, you know, dominate, hand it back and forth with Harvick in there, winning as well. So... It's going to be interesting to see how this, how they recover from this and move forward, Marty. 
And Steve, we have documented the amazing rally for the 18 team today, but there's a bigger problem, and you'll understand this as a crew chief. That back panel is not on the back of the 18 car, so when they go to plug the fuel can in, it will not work. They cannot get fuel in the 18 car. They have to physically hold the panel. They can't change tires at the same time. So they are currently seven gallons short from being able to make it to the end of this race, and they're not sure how they're going to get fuel in when they come in and stop this time. Here's the radio with Adam Stevens a moment ago telling Kyle Busch what the situation. We have fuel in it. It'll be about seven gallons short. And there you go. So they are going to be seven gallons short here, Steve. So they're trying to figure out what they're going to do on the stop, how they're going to get fuel in, and how they're going to finish this race. Right. Well, from what you're explaining, Marty, they can get fuel in if someone holds the panel, which means it's going to slow the pit stop down. It took him basically 75 laps to drive from the back half of the lead lap up to second. If they have to have another slow pit stop, Rick, I mean, it's a great race car, but with 62 to go, I don't think you can expect to do Steve, the same thing but, again. But, Steve, they don't have to get it full, right? right? Well, 62 to go. They're seven gallons short, and they have to get seven gallons in. Should only take, you know, three and a half seconds or so if the car was in good working order. But you can see by the damage that uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they try to do this. The other, the other issue with that, Steve, is that they've been working all night on that car with full of fuel, and then they go put tires on it and did, don't get it full of fuel. It's going to drive different. It's, the car is not going to drive the same because it's going to have – less rear weight percentage and then that's going to change the way the car drives and you see there's no nothing supporting that green area at the right rear or excuse me left rear behind the left rear tire and you see the dry brake and you see just the i mean the body works right. blowing around at caution lap speed so it's a hundred pound fuel can that the fuel man the gas man is going to push he needs it to push back, right? If it just gives like a sponge, it's not going to work. Steve, I think they can get some fuel in it. I mean, he's been racing for this damage all night long. So at some point, they've been able to get fuel in the car, but it's going to just cost him some time on pit road. And how much time will that cost him? How many spots will he lose? And can't afford to lose any spots with 60 laps to go. Yeah, I mean, the last time, he was the last car off pit road in the lead lap. So it, it, his pit stop was so slow that he gave up every position on the lead lap. And like you said, that that'll just be a devastating blow. Well, the drivers, we heard earlier that feelings are going to get hurt when you go short track racing. Well, Sherry Pollock's longtime girlfriend of Martin Trucks Jr. just tweeted, OMG, can't believe that just happened. Kyle Busch is a moron. And so, so listen, the wives ride with the husbands. Yeah. I'm telling you, the boyfriend, the girlfriends, and it's, you know, they go through so much. And, and they ride, you know, they see their husbands and boyfriends when they come home they see the heartbreak when things don't go well so when you hear somebody express that opinion that's because they're living this every single day and the emotion involved in it runs really high yeah we saw the frustration of Martin Trucks Jr. when he got out of the car he kicked the car uh, so frustrated at what had taken place they're getting ready ready for that car to get onto the, the hall they're not trying to get back out on the racetrack. Here we go. The field's coming down pit road. Let's see what happens with Kyle Busch. Marty. Marty. And, you guys, it's interesting. The, the chassis adjustment on the 18 was almost an afterthought. Their whole conversation was about how this fuel situation was going to go down. They are going to make a very small wedge adjustment. You see him plug it in. You see it just flex in. It doesn't do anything. They have one guy in there trying to hold it as best as they can. That's Nate Bellows, the car chief, trying to hold it in there as best as he can. There's the adjustment. They're going to lose a ton of track position here, but that's what they did, and they think they got enough fuel in it to make it to the end here, Parker. Marty, Eric Jones in the middle of your screen. There's going to pit out of the top three. He feels like he just needs more fire off speed. As we know, he's been great on the long run. Sunoco fuel above. He pits out of 10th. He said, just said the car is awful, and Austin Dillon has been looking for more grip up tops, Kelly. Trucks Jr. has just been released from the infield care center, and after a couple of hard hits in the wall, glad to see that you're okay, Martin. What did you feel there before that wreck? I just got hit in the left rear. Pretty simple. I mean, uh, it's a shame. We had a good night going. Started off rough, battled hard, and uh, got the car pretty good there. So, you know, I uh,
56 to go, Rick. I'm not Clint Boyer on the outside. And great flag back in the air. 55 laps to go for Bristol. This cycle of pit stops and this restarts hurt Chase Elliott. Falling all the way back to eighth place. After having such a great run earlier tonight, his teammate Jimmy Johnson up here on the inside of Austin Hill, and Austin has the preferred line on the outside. And that Ryan Newman kind of called his name, and there he is. He's hanging out on Ryan Newman. Look at him about to get turned around here. He tries to get down in front of Chase Elliott. Three wide off the turn two. Oh, that's frustrating for Chase. Chase knows with 53 to go, he's going to have to push the issue. You've got to be aggressive. you just got to be aggressive here, just like Truex said. Got to move these guys while you can and get on up to the front. It's the only way you're going to have a shot at winning this race. Chase jumped to the outside. That's going to have a good run right here on Newman, trying to drive in the corner a little bit deeper than he can. Now carry speed through the middle. Just couldn't carry it through the middle like he needed to. Newman's going to block him. Chase tries to cross him over. See if he can carry that speed through the middle. He He's does. Very, yeah. Got him. That was a great move. That was great aggressive. Race. Yeah. Awesome. Whole field now in front of Chase. All those. Bumper of Clint Boyer there, but then the next corner just did not roll. Now Eric's trying to take the fight to him. Jimmy Johnson's watching all this. Eric did not get off of turn four good. Hard to do in turn three and four. Oh, contact, contact right there. there again. Both drivers, great car control from both drivers there. I know Eric probably didn't mean to do that. Similar situation that we saw with Kyle Busch. Oh, look there. That's what you got to do. But well, you got to do exactly what Jimmy did. He, he had the position. He had the nose on the 20 going down a turn where you cannot lift. It's too late. Guys are going to try to chop you. Going to expect you to lift. And you just can't give that up. Well, Junior, think about the year of Jimmy Johnson. Career long winless streak. You say you can't lift. I'm not sure there's anyone hungry inside the top five to win this race. They're the seven-time champion. Yeah, you ain't going to chop up the seven-time champion. He ain't going to lift. He's struggling right now, though. And he's going to get Larson. hit. Yeah, Larson oh, puts the bumper to him. Three wide off of two. And this is picking up. 45 to go. As you said it, Junior. You can't lift now. You got to go. Jimmy Johnson fighting back. So watch. I want to show you something. Jimmy Johnson should be running second right now. Watch him coming off pit road. Watch Kurt Busch. He's, Jimmy Johnson is in fourth. He keeps going. Kurt Busch slows down. That gave Kurt Busch the outside. Now Kurt's running second, and Jimmy's back here in this battle. He and his spotter need to do a better job there to get themselves in that outside lane. Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, and how badly do you think Jimmy Johnson wants to break that winless streak? We know how good he is, he is here at Bristol, but I got to tell you, when I was talking to Chad Canals today, he didn't seem overly optimistic. Basically told me they kind of had a, about a top 10 car, so it seems like they're overachieving a bit today. These guys are having a good battle. Battle up front, though, starting to heat up. It's Kurt Busch, he's a new guy that's moving into the conversation, moving into the battle. See, Ryan Blady, a lot of sparks in the middle of the corner, wow. sideways. Wow. Hard contact. He has been struggling this whole second half of the race. Yeah, so fast early. Saw him leading, battling for the lead. 14 radio. Let's hear what Kurt and Clint's talking about. Pray for green, no. Pray for green. You know it. Pray for green. I feel they must feel like they have a long run car, have a little bit of clear track in front of them. That 41, though, guys, he is not 
and a slouch when it comes to Bristol. Remember, we've talked about his brother all day, the seven-time winner. Well, Kurt Busch is a five-time winner here. He knows how to win at the high banks of Bristol. This is a driver. He's seen his teammates win this year, right? He's seen that 14 go to victory lane. He's seen Kevin Harvick go to victory lane. There's been rumors in the garage here about where he'll drive next year. They've tried to quiet those rumors. The best way to quiet them, winning. That fixes about every issue within a race team. He's got 37 laps to do it. They're going by fast. Here's the battle for third right here. Chase Elliott, who all the way back in seventh, eighth place after the restart has worked his way into fourth place. He's got great speed, but he's going to have to get by his 20 quickly as the laps are winding down. He needs to get by him quickly to be able to run down those leaders. It's going to be hard to do. Eric Jones has been really good at keeping guys behind him. He saw all kinds of pressure earlier, and nobody could make it happen. So you see how high he is. Carries great momentum through the middle and then on corner exit. So how is Chase going to pass him? He's going to have to get a big run and then just put a slider on him and try to make it work. Eric Jones was into his bumper several laps ago. We saw it on the last run. Chase has every right in my mind to go up there and give him the same aggression if he can get there. Kelly. Kurt Busch, a five-time winner here, yet he said the first couple times he came to Bristol, he was blown away by the speed and intensity of 2002. He showed up, and everything just seemed to slow down, and he really credits his old crew chief, Jimmy Fennick, for that help. You talk about those rumors, and I asked his crew chief, Billy Scott, how that's affected the team. He said, look, the best thing we can do is keep performing week in and week out. We have a lot to accomplish this season. We can't look ahead to what's going to happen four months from now. Marty? This Clint, his teammate Clint Boyer leading right now, trying for his third win of the season. When I talked to Mike Bergeravich this morning, he said, we've been terrible all weekend. I have no idea if this setup is going to work. Well, it certainly has worked the last three stops. No changes for Boyer. And you guys want to hear a weird stat? His two wins this year have come before off weekends. Guess what next week is? An off weekend. That would be weird if Boyer wins again this weekend here at Bristol. He's not going to think it's too weird, though, because he'll have that giant trophy that Jeff and Junior were talking about earlier. Incredible race, 18 lead changes between eight different drivers. Let's take a look at tonight's lap leaders brought to you by Honda Power Sports. Ryan Blaney has led the most laps, 121. Clint Boyer, he could lead the most laps if he's able to stay out front, but the caution has come out. The two of Brad Keselowski is around. Saw a lot of smoke, and he was slow on the track. That will put Alex Bowen back in the lead lap, I believe. He's the first car lap down. Wow, that thing just came around. Right to the bottom of the racetrack. Don't see a tire down. It is there, obviously, but it blew out. But wow, that thing came around fast. We got a flat. but it blew out. But wow. That yeah, he said that entire run, that was a 27 lap run. So clearly you can't run, you know, with a tire going down that whole time. But Jeff, you said something a little earlier uh, when we were talking about some of the keys. Uh, restarts. We're going to have another one with very few laps to go. It's Bristol. I mean, we see it all the time. We see these late race restarts. And I think it's going to be interesting right now. Pit road's open. Who's coming and who's staying? 15 cars on the lead lap. They have the opportunity to come on this first time by. And it looks as though Chase Elliott from third is going to come onto pit road. And look how many cars he brings with him. Almost everyone on the lead lap comes to you, Marty. Mike Bugarabich made the call for Clint Boyer to stay out. He said nothing is going to beat this track position. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, Alan Gustafson bringing Chase Elliott down pit road to the car way too tight. And I don't like being on the bottom on these restarts. If he can help me get to the top, that would be awesome. The wedge adjustment, also air pressure, trying to free that car up, Parker. Eric Jones pits. He cannot turn off turns one and two. Just too tight down on the bottom right now. Most likely going to do four tires. This was a big discussion about coming down or not. Yes, it's going to be four figure tires and Sunoco fuel. And the three there you see only took left side tires, Dave. Kyle Larson came down pit road, fired off tight, got extremely loose there at the end. He'll take four and fuel. With the two tire stop. That is Austin Dillon who wins the race off of pit road. Denny Hamlin's going to do the same thing. Gap grabbing nine spots. But remember, a couple of guys. Welcome. Hi there. So what do you look for in a vehicle? 
sleek designs. Performance. Dependability is top on my list. Well, then here's some vehicles that deliver on that. Whoa. Wow. Jeez. That's our truck. It's our truck! And there are cars! That's my Chevy! Chevy's the only brand to have earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards across cars, trucks, and SUVs three years in a row. Awesome and proud. You know, it's like a dynasty. It's impressive. This summer, the world's greatest thoroughbreds compete for a spot in the richest event in American horse racing. Wow, what a finish! The Challenge Series continues at the Traverse Stakes, Saturday, August 25th on NBC. The NBC Sports Gold Premier League Pass. Get exclusive access to matches every week. He scores! Plus, stream an extensive collection of Premier League programming. Would you believe it? Visit NBCSportsGold.com for more info. And here it comes. Austin Dillon wins. There's the ace. Bubba Wallace in second. And they contact. Watch it to the bottom of the You don't know, like that kind of racing? Don't even watch The champ is back in victory lane. How special. When injuries ravaged Ken's team, he went out and found the next big name. are the first only they'll take row three and chase selly and kyle bush in row four are the first two cars with four tires so now what's going to be more important clear track or fresh goodyear rubber you see everybody's choices green flag with 23 to go it's the night race i expect some sparks rick <laughs> well there might be a little bump in your banging because we have seen that already intensity has picked up boyer kurt bush making up row one Back up through the gears at Bristol. Kurt Busch with a great restart. He cleared him. Kurt Busch takes the lead on the restart. Three wide for third. Kyle Busch jumps to the outside of that 37 car. Chris Buescher trying to make that three wide move himself. Contact that and they get through that. More contact. We're seeing a little bit of tire smoke out of 37 of Busher. They're still three wide. This won't last long. Those tires on the 11 are helping him hold that top position. And look at this squeeze down the front stretch. Chris Buescher drops back. Uh, after Chris Buescher's got a right front tire down. Well, and a lot of smoke coming out of the 18 as well of Kyle Busch after that contact. Now battle again for the lead. Clint Boyer on the inside tries to take it back. Kyle Busch has trouble. He's got a left rear tire down. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of contact between those cars. And the tires just can't take that. Left rear down, he'll have to come back to pit road, trying to find a way to the bottom back. of the track. Kurt Busch still holding out the top spot. Around goes the 18. They got the left front along. Yellow, 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 yellow. That yellow. brings out the caution. Casey Kane had been scored a lap down in the 17th position. Probably will get the free pass. Well, look at look at the banking too. He can't go anywhere because he doesn't have any rubber on the wheels. The tires have come off. Hear the crowd cheer. Look at the what's the situation here, Steve? He can't move that car. Is that pretty much taking him out of the event? Yeah, once he drops the wind and that gets out, he's going to be all gone. <laughs> he don't want to well, drop it. We've seen NASCAR help cars uh, when they're in a situation from being high sided at the road course. Yeah. NASCAR yep. may choose to push him, but his chance of winning is over. Such a polarizing figure. The place goes electric. He moves the needle up, down, good, bad, in and out. What Kyle Busch does on the racetrack definitely excites the fans. Telling you guys, Kurt Bush did not want to see this yellow because now Danny Hamlin in that 11 and Kyle Larson with four fresh tires in that 42 will be in the row right behind those leaders. There's not a lot to push, by the way, on the back of that 18. No, there's not, Rick. I think they'll give him a push. Now, listen, NASCAR said to. this. They said in situations where you get stuck because of the racetrack and the right. shape of the racetrack, they'll assist you a little bit. There you go. He'll come and get a left rear tire. And I'm sure they'll cut more of the body off of the 18. 
So Kurt Busch is out front and closing in on 16 laps to go. Clint Boyer running second. Hamlin, Larson, Johnson, Blaney. But it was the tight racing for the fourth position. You're right there. You see the 18 car. That's what cuts the left rear and 37 car. Busher, he had his right front go down. You know, three wide at Bristol. It's going to be some contact. There's no way not to be on the corner exit. And it's just too much for the tires to handle. But it's late in the race. Who's going to lift? If you lift, you're not going to win. If you don't lift, you have a tire problem. What a tough break for Chris Busher. Did such a wonderful job all night. Whatever goes flat and around the 18 goes. 48's on pit road right now, too, guys. Kelly. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson did not want to come, come to pit road, but Chad Knauss insisted. He was worried about some of the damage, as we saw him kind of sandwiched in there on that last run. So they're going to change all four Goodyear tires here. I like this call. Not calling a race with emotion. Why I like this call? Because Jimmy Johnson's 15th in points, 106 points up. 10 points, 12 points, that's what he might give up. I know Jimmy Johnson wants to try to win the race, but Chad Canals at this point, he's a defense mode. He's, let's just get out of here with some points. Two races at the playoffs, so let's make sure we're in the playoff picture. So the 48 will come off of pit road with four fresh tires. Only 15 cars on the lead lap, that's including Casey Kane. So we saw... Kurt Busch take the lead from Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer, he controlled the restart. He's on the outside. You see the restart zone. Clint goes. He just spins the tires, and Kurt does a great job. It has him clear to get into turn one. That's a clean restart. I wanted to see a replay because how does a guy not controlling the restart beat the control car getting into turn one? I thought maybe he jumped, but that was a clean restart, Marty. Well, the 14 is not happy about it. So we've seen corporate teammates not be happy with each other. Now we have teammates not happy with each other. Listen on the radio. He ran into me. He's not going to get me loose. Well, payback's a bitch. Step four. Five for nine. And Mike Bagaravich came on the radio later. I said, I thought we were supposed to race each other hard, not hit each other. I didn't see any contact there, but Boyer, not happy. Well, in that same replay, who made the big move? The 11 and Danny Hamlin, three wide, using those two fresh tires. Well, guys... Kyle Larson won the Xfinity race last night, said Bristol is absolute favorite racetrack. He's on four fresh tires starting in the outside road, too. I believe he's going to be at the top going into turn one. Now it's Kurt Busch's turn to control the restart. Pace car diving onto pit road. 41 and 14. Coming out of turn four. Back up through the gears they go again. Terrible restart for the 14 of Clint Boyer. Didn't time it properly. Kyle Larson in the second place with those tires to see what he can do with Kurt Busch. Those new tires, they will let him make that bottom work a little better than old tires. That's what he's going to have to do. Kurt's not going to give him the time. 30 laps difference in tires for Kyle Larson. 30 laps pressure for Larson then for Kurt Busch. One thing we know Kyle Larson will do, because we've seen it. He doesn't mind throwing an aggressive slider to try to get by for the 41. He's, so he's got to get to his rear bumper on point of entry at, with some momentum. And you know the, you know what's coming. Kurt Busch knows what's coming. How do you defend it? That's the question. Coming to 10 to go right here. 10 to go, 10. Does he take his line away? Does he take away the possibility of the slide job? Boy, Kurt, Kurt Busch car looks pretty good there in one and two. This car is turning good. I don't know if Kyle is able to put enough throttle down to make any gains off the corner. Five-time winner out front. A guy who wants a win here so bad. Says it's his favorite racetrack. Running second. Well, little bobble a little there. Way loose. That's a, that's a car lead. That's huge in Bristol. Slipping off the corner. It's he just take a while to get that back. Even if he's fast enough, he just gave up two car links. And, man, at Bristol, that's a ton. He has struggled all night long. He was so fast in practice, but he struggled all night long with speed. Now in a position to strike with his tire, you know, better tires and just can't really get the car to hook up. He is so loose. Kurt Busch doing a great job. They're both in there working the tools. You know they're using that track bar adjuster, trying to figure out where that needs to be. 
Maybe even play with the brake levers, trying to set that up to where that needs to be to help the car. It's been 58 races since Kurt Busch has won. And think about the number of times he's seen Kevin Harvick win. He's seen Clint Boyer win. He needs to get this win. His teammates have been winning. He hasn't. The momentum this would build for him going into the playoffs would be huge. You don't want to give a guy like Kurt Busch confidence. He's already an aggressive driver. If he put, give him a little more belief in himself, he's going to be hard to beat in the playoffs. He's putting together some awesome laps here. He's been faster than Kyle over the last several laps. Right there, just a tick quicker. Larson not able to close. Just three laps to go. And I don't want to use the word comfortable, but he's got a big lead right now over second place, Kyle Larson. Less than 45 seconds to go in this race. Two to go. Two laps remain. Kurt Busch with his career in question after 2018. Doesn't have a deal for next year. Hasn't won in 58 races. Credit one, one to go. Kurt Busch trying to make sure he's in the playoffs with a win. Kurt Busch has a six pack of Monster Energy in Bristol. at Bristol. And a huge one here. Kurt Busch wins in the Monster Energy Cup Series for the first time this year. Two great restarts to end this race. We'll put Kurt Busch in victory lane again. This moment presented by Sunoco, viewing victories all season long. A lot of tape on the front of that car, but the celebration is going to continue for two weeks because Kurt Busch now has a win in 2018. And that guarantees a spot in the playoffs. feeling for Kurt Busch. Celebrated a birthday a couple of weeks ago. You can tell this one means a lot at a place he's been so successful at over the years. Had an incredible final restart and had to hold off Kyle Larson with fresher tires. Let him get his helmet off after a long, exhausting night. How about that one, Kurt? How did you hold off Larson, who had 30 lap fresher tires? 
It was awesome uh, to be in this position. When you race at a short track on Saturday night, it brings back all the memories of growing up as a kid and racing with your dad and your family. And I didn't want to let my dad down. He's here tonight, and my wife said, go out there and go get him, show what it's all about. And uh, it was just perfect with the restarts, and I can't thank Monster Energy enough. This Ford was awesome. And they saw the great fans. This was an awesome, awesome win for us. How about these fans right here pressed up against the fence to see you, Kurt? These guys are awesome. Everybody here knows what this Saturday night short track's all about. And we got the best fans in sports. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Good show, huh? There you go, Kurt Busch. He'll get to victory lane in a moment. We will see him there. And the 100th win for Ford in their fusion, they get to victory lane in Bristol. Talk about win 100, Ford. How about win number one for crew chief Billy Scott? Yeah, he'll celebrate as well. Kurt Busch, the long winless streak has come to an end. And it happens at the world's fastest half mile. It's the Ford Summer 